All right, you want to talk about Joe Rogan? <laughs> the reason why we're all here today? Bro, Tell Rogan. Jogan. Does Joe Rogan have a wiki feed page? He must, right? <laughs> I've never visited Joe's For wiki sure feed page. Does. Let's see what kind of toes this this uh, toe Rogan has. He looks like a toe. Ooh, brutal! I don't know if the th I don't know if we had anything to do with that, but he's been brutalized. <laughs> Holy shit! One star. I doubt that we don't have anything. You think to so? That. Someone's got to show this to Joe. Whoever's the guest. I didn't do anything, but. I Lots find one star kind of suspicious. Yeah, one star is like brutal. That's brutal. <laughs> Love him. Um, so Joe Rogan, first of all, okay. Listen, I didn't want to have to do this, Joe. He came after Ela. He literally called Ela an idiot. <laughs> like I can't believe this conversation we're about to have. Um. Joe Rogan called Ela our queen, an idiot. I kind of feel like it's a flex for me. Like it's a big flex. I could be like, yo, Joe Rogan called me dumb. Right. <laughs> Here's the clip. Let's watch it. Now, Whitney Cummings, she's a friend of ours. So, mm -hmm. you know, I love Whitney. But I don't know the context of this. Has anyone watched this? They were, they were, Whitney was throwing these parties at her house. Now, let me remind you, this is during the height of the pandemic. People were not even supposed to be gathering at the time. Yeah. Everyone there was supposed to be wearing a mask. The first time I think I was invited, I didn't go. Second time I was like, I mean, it does look really fun. I haven't done anything in like months. It's and outdoors. And she said, basically, it's outdoors. Everyone's getting taste tested. So, you know. Um, so I decided to go, but I was super paranoid about even going. And I was very uncomfortable going to that party, you know, just not that I yeah. was forced to do it, but I, it was very uncomfortable experience. It was during the worst time of the pandemic. Yeah. The CD there, was there saying, was no, don't gather. There was no talk of a vaccine or anything at that time. Right. And it was like surging and, you know, um, yeah. So, and we, we had, we were trying to be very careful because of our son and our nanny and, and people in our. You know, everyone. Yeah, I have my parents. I have uh, employees to worry. Like I'm not trying to give anyone COVID in my life. So everyone there was <laughs> technically supposed to be wearing a mask, and this was during a time, by the way, when we were shitting on a lot of influencers who were being super irresponsible, going not wearing masks Having and stuff. COVID parties. So, so it's like you know we don't want to be caught to fucking being hypocrites. You know, Ela was there. She was protected. She was wearing a mask. It was outside. And um, listen to what Joe Fuckface Toe Rogan. Sauna boy, I had to say about it. That's Olivia the, Munn. Who's wearing the mask? That is Hila Klein. Olivia's not. She's a gangster. Look at her in the <laughs> She's a gangster. Fuck, giving all the COVID. <laughs> Meanwhile, people have been literally God. this outside with a mask on and everyone's tested. That's so what's good. so dumb. So it's not wow. so dumb, <laughs> dipshit. First of all, I don't know why he keeps insisting on this war against, like, dude, again. Even if it was taken yesterday, why do you fucking care if why someone's you wearing a mask? Care, you don't, seriously. you know, why is he, he, he's, he can't give what up on this What are you trying COVID to prove bump. so wrong, bro, Jogan? What are you trying to prove so wrong? That you're a gangster? Look at him. He's, he's, right, too, gangster. Well, he's too invested in, like, hating COVID. It's like part of his identity Because now. he's a tough guy. He doesn't need a mask. That's for pussies, Ethan. Yeah, he said pussies are, are for ma are pussies are for masks. I mean, I thought he, people said that he was joking when he said that, but um, that doesn't look like he's joking. So that Bill, seems like a theme now that I've seen over a few episodes. Well, yeah, he, so Bill Burr called him out when he said, he, around this time, ironically, mm -hmm. where this actual video was shot, Joe Rogan said masks are for pussies on his show, which is like, bro, I can't get over what a dumb statement that is, but Bill Burr set him straight immediately. And he's always been trying to be like, oh, I'm just kidding. But he keeps saying shit like that, which shows that, like, he clearly is not kidding. The whole fucking time, there's been fucking assholes on my street walking around, no masks, you know, not s quarantining like the people that come by the houses. You see the fucking, you know, the same people that were going in and out of the house who are not part of their family still going in and out of the house. You want people to walk down the street with a mask on? Let's not start this, Joe. Do you, though? <laughs> Let's not start this. I love how Bill was like, mm -hmm. you fucking dumbass. Yeah. And this is the height of the pandemic. This isn't really like a debate, like yeah. a mainstream debate. I mean, except beyond like total partisans, like QAnon people, you know what I mean? 
Like, the only people that were saying don't wear a mask are people that are like, they're stealing it. Wearing a mask is a symbol of oppression. They're just trying to control us. So this is like some really alpha to the moon shit. Okay. Well, you know what? I, I don't want to step I'm not going to sit. Like, my respect for Bill Burr went up, like, yeah. times 1,000 because... I just feel like, I don't know, everyone, like, just kind of, like, caves to Bro Jogan. Mm-hmm. And, um... He's alpha. What do you expect? And Bill Burr is, like... He, he was so quick to be, like, no, 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 no. That's You true. don't even go there. Bill is this amazing force that he cannot... Yeah. He will never be influenced or cave. Yeah. Like, I feel like other comedians go on there, and then all of a sudden they turn into, like, uh... I, Trish always says this, but, like, pick-me people. Where they're like, oh, Joe Rogan, yeah, smoke, I'm down for whatever you say, or right. cool, and yeah, fucking masks. But Bill Burr was like, fuck you, idiot. Love that. Sit here with no medical degree, listening to you with no medical degree, <laughs> with an American flag behind you, smoking yeah. a cigar, <laughs> acting like we know what's up better than the CDC. All I do is I listen, I watch the news once every two weeks. I'm like, eh, mask or no mask? Still mask? All right, mask. That's all I give a fuck about. I don't care. But even they say you shouldn't wear a mask unless you're treating a coronavirus patient. No, the world no. Health they never yeah, but they didn't say that initially. That. They didn't say it initially. No, they didn't. They did. And then it gradually, then it gradually, and then, wait, wait, thank wait, you, and then Bill. everybody wore thank the you. fucking mask. This is like rollerblading. Everybody fucking rollerbladed, and then there was that one fucking homophobic joke, and then everybody acted like they never did it. Thank you, Bill. And then a, a hundred million fucking rollerblades got thrown into the fucking ocean. We all wore masks, and then all of a sudden, people are fucking sitting there. What? You don't have the body type for it, dude. <laughs> fucking numbers would scrape on the ground. <laughs> Even with that extra two inches. <laughs> Your knuckles would scrape on the ground. Uh... <laughs> Man, Bill Burr traumatized me though. <laughs> There's still a part of me that's just scared of him. Or like just traumatized. <laughs> Even though we had like a good uh second we had, half. Yeah. The follow-up episode yeah. with him was great. It was yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um you know, like dude, really and then that, so it's like imagine it's like Olivia but Munn it's, is it's, awesome. Ela Klein, dumbass. God, it, it's such a short clip and so much to unpack. But Girl, it's like again, Bill too. said. I'm following the rules. Back then, they said you gotta wear a mask, so I'm out there wearing a mask. Yeah. Wow, big deal. And then now they say, you know, if you're outside, you don't need to wear a mask. It's pretty simple. You want to talk about who's dumb? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a whole, there's a whole. The CDC is like this whole governmental body with scientists and shit that just tell us what to do. You don't have to think about it, dude. Wearing the mask. That is Who's wearing a mask? Who's that fucking Who's wearing loser? a mask? Who's that piece of shit? Yeah. I want to name her. Can that person come up and like go shove themselves? Fine. Olivia's not. She's a gangster. Look at her in the front <laughs> row. Fuck it. Give me all the COVID. <laughs> Meanwhile, people have been, look, look at this, outside with a mask on and everyone's tested. So That's what's good. so dumb. So hey, That's Joe, my so own dumb. fucking Okay, business. you want to talk about dumb. <laughs> The, the testing doesn't mean anything. You yeah. can get tested fine, but it doesn't give you the guarantee. There's a fake, you know, there's a pulse, a false negative. Yep. You can get that and then you would still give it to everyone in the party. Sorry, I don't want to do that to other people. I don't want right. to be the one that's going to end up giving 20 people by accident because my test didn't work that one time. Um, give them COVID and then they give it to their mom and their mom dies. Yeah, he doesn't give a fuck. You know, again, I keep okay, going back. The let's White talk House. Talk about who's gangster and who's dumb. Dude, I think that I think being a male means protecting the people. Right. Well, I'm not. Giving, I don't want to get into like stereo, gender stereotypes. But like even the traditional male stereotype that he loves, males are supposed to protect people, right? Like, so what the fuck is protective about being a douche and fucking spreading COVID to people? By the way, the White House super spreading event was outside and everyone was tested. One person came with COVID, and a bunch of people got it and almost died, including the president. Mm -hmm. So Steven Crowder is one of these, like, these, like, YouTube conservative grifters who, like, I was telling Dan, I'm like, I wish that I would just be a conservative. It'd be, like, so <laughs> much easy money. It's the easiest grift in, in like, the game. Every take is so obvious. They, it's like everyone has the same opinion. And if you even have, like, one gram of, like, personality, then it's just, like, the easiest grift ever. You guys know Steven Crowder from these Change My Mind things where he goes to college campuses oh. and then debates, oh. like... Children. <laughs> poor, like, not fully educated. You know, in college, you think you know shit, but you don't. 
This is like freshman in college. I mean, come on. So he, he does. Male privilege like is a uh-huh. myth. Change my mind. Stuff like that. Yeah. I came across one of these one time that just like was so upsetting to watch. About oh. like Yeah, it's about like I don't know. I don't even remember, but something about like gay or LGBTQ kind of topic. You should find some other good ones, like maybe what you was talking about. And it was it was really annoying. Yeah, they're all like they're all of his video. You're talking about one of his videos of him. Change my mind. I mean, it, they're they're all like his, basically yeah. like a little racist or misogynist or mm-hmm. or like white nationally, which is kind of his flavor of content. But anyway, the reason we're talking about him is because he made a video about us, <clears throat> and you know we don't fuck when people talk shit. Play that horn. Yes. Wait, are we even doing that anymore? I don't fuck around when people talk shit. But that's usually about wiki feet. No, this is about going to war at any time, <laughs> for any purpose. You hear that? Mm. Oh, fucking wet when people talk shit. <laughs> but this guy's such an easy... This guy's such a fucking easy target because he's such a douche. Such a douche. Of course, everything comes down to this Joe Rogan clip. <laughs> Funnily enough, mm-hmm. like the uh, the I don't know the whole story has echoed through because it's like Joe Rogan is daddy. He's like daddy conservative now, and and like he he's like anti COVID, anti vax, and all this shit. Like so, the conservatives prop him up. Like see, and of course, uh, Crowder got offended. That I said you should listen to the CDC, which, as you know, is an awful opinion. Which is, of course, why like half a million people died, or like six hundred thousand now. Eh? How many people died now in the U.S.? Uh, I think it cleared six hundred thousand. I oh, it did. I think. I love how he can be like, dude. This guy says listen to the CDC. What a tool. Cut scene to, to uh, someone dying on a ventilator. It's just under six hundred. Yeah. So here's what he says about it. And- I don't think I've ever seen him more. I have, a, I have a lot to say about Crowder, to be honest with you guys. Who, by the way, this guy was recently fucking, his whole channel was demonetized on YouTube for being <laughs> such a shitbag. And that is hard to do. You basically have to be like ISIS to get demonetized by YouTube. <laughs> I was saying, you know, the only two channels I know that were outright banned is Leafy is here and ISIS. <laughs> so he wasn't even banned. He was permanently demonetized. Indefinitely. <laughs> Indefinitely. Which means it could be lifted. Because I guess it happened once before, and he was demonetized for about a year. And then they, oh, for real? And they gave it back. Yeah. So this has happened already to him. He, this is round two. What was he demonetized for the first time? Uh, it was for harassing this journalist who's gay. Oh, um, right. I remember that whole yeah. thing. Yeah. He, right, right. It was right, a whole right. thing. And YouTube really played it poorly, too, if you recall, because they, like, they pissed they f- everyone off. They flip flopped like ten times on it and managed to make everybody upset in the right. process. It was very dumb of them. I do remember. Well, anyway, in this most recent one, he um, his first strike was for spreading election misinformation. Obviously, Nevada voters mysterious. The Nevada voter mystery deepens. Um, he claimed that an unknown person or group altered public records to hide the fact of a former Hillary aide who has been missing for two years, may have voted illegally. Anyway, he got a strike for that one. He got a second strike uh, for an episode covering the killing of a 16-year-old boy by police. Crowder and his co-host argued that the shooting was justified, making jokes about the circumstance of the shooting. That's pretty... And then you guys may recall the day that the George Floyd verdict came out, he made, he literally posted a mock George Floyd killing where one of his homies kneeled on his neck. Yeah, that for was pretty minutes. horrific. So, I mean, the guy's a piece of shit. Let's be honest. I believe it was the day he came back to YouTube after. Oh, that's right. Wow. He, got ba- he got suspended. Correct. For. I think it was because of that first strike. I think it was the Nevada thing. The he got guy suspended, is such and then a, when he, I mean, I thought it was. I a, could, it could be wrong. Yeah. It's hard to keep track because I, <laughs> I, I don't get these guys. They act so shocked when shit happens. It's like you've been testing the boundaries mm-hmm. relentlessly. Yeah. Well, it's it's 
it's a feature, not a bug. You know what I mean? Like it, it, every time they get in trouble with YouTube, they get more support from their audience. So. For sure. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. It was about, it's part of the grift. I believe it was about the uh, black farmers when he was making the joke. Oh, dude. You got, and then that and one, he, go, he goes, <laughs> right. I can't even show it. It's so racist. He goes, there's no, su he's like the subsidies to, there's a, was a specific carve out in the, uh, one of the bills for COVID relief for black farmers. And he's like, there's no such thing as a black farmer. And he was making all these crazy stereotypes about like the farmers like waiting for Jordans and spending the money on yeah. Jordans instead of farm equipment and shit. Real low hanging. It there. was crazy, like yeah. super racist shit, bro. It's crazy that you can be like that much of a shit bag and have, and people are like, yeah, but that's what they like. Anyway, here's what he says. Here's something that I really wanted to touch on. Oh boy. This guy, uh, I think his name, what's his, what's his Bro, name? I can't, there? like, there's so much to say because I haven't really talked about him. But the dude has such small dick energy that he's wearing a holster. He wears a fucking gun holster, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, he's such, he has such beta <laughs> energy. He needs a gun holster to feel, like, masculine. Wait, he's wearing it as, like, an accessory? Yeah. Yeah, yeah always. Yes. <laughs> he wears a gun holster, bro. <laughs> And he's got tissues next to him in case, you know. He starts crying. To, in, yeah, <laughs> exactly. In case he starts crying and his mascara starts running. Or if he, you know, I was going to make a, a jizz in his pants uh -huh. joke, but I don't know where that's going. Yours, <laughs> yours is funnier, frankly. But um, why is there tissue? I mean, dude, having tissue a, on the desk is not that big of a necessity. Really. Pro tip for all guys. Hmm. Don't wear this kind of shirt, too. Good call. Bad look. Baseball tees. Yeah. Mm. Well, anytime you put a, 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 a Wait, gun holster the, over it, yeah, which I guarantee is empty, but yeah, beta. Uh, uh, Token Allen, is it? Is his real name Ethan? <laughs> Ethan. Ethan. Yeah. Is it? Uh, the H. Yeah, yeah. It's thing. Ethan. Ethan. What's so what is it there? <laughs> okay, so Dude, look at this you're big the, the show. Guy. He's trying to act like Ethan. he doesn't know who I am. <laughs> Crowder has been such a bitch. He's been trying to collab. And get me on his show and come on and hit my show. And I'm always like, I don't fucking like this guy. He's a massive douchebag and I've always ghosted him. Him and Ben Shapiro and Dave Rubin and all those guys always wanted to hook up with me because I was making social justice warrior videos. What's his name? Ethan? 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 What's that name? Eth? Eth? I've never heard that name. Ethan? Yeah. It's like, you know who I am, dude. I don't know how to pronounce this. And if you don't know who I am, you definitely have heard of the name Ethan before. <laughs> Is it Ethan? Ethan? <laughs> Ethan? Ethan. Ethan. So, I have an email, by the way, from his like producer um, or some shit. One of his producers trying to get me to come on the show. Here, I'll read it because there's some funny excerpts in it. So, hi, I'm a celebrity talent booker for Louder with Crowder. I'd love to book Ethan Klein. Ethan? Ethan Klein. Who? Bold. They even bolded my name. That his real name? What? They bolded my name. Hmm. They said, Louder with Crowder is a syndicated show uh, hosted by Steven Crowder, stand-up co comedian. <laughs> he may be many things, but I don't think this motherfucker is a stand-up comedian. <laughs> he was a post for four years on Fox News. He was their youngest ever contributor. It said Roger Ailes even had a round with him. <laughs> Steven's irreverent, edgy, yet distinctively conservative style has thrust him into the national success appearing on most major cable shows. <laughs> mm. And then when I didn't respond, this booker was so desperate to get me, she said, uh, she responded, let's see, five days later, good morning, following up on the below request, can we find a day that works? And then again, seven days later, forward me uh, the original email again. <laughs> so Crowder is very desperate to get me on his show. Who? For a guy who says he who? who's never he does he, he 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 doesn't he knows me so little he doesn't even know how to pronounce Ethan. <laughs> He's never even heard of that name before. Ethan Klein, your mic's on there. You're, the, you're the audio guy. Ethan Klein. There Ethan. I love Ethan? how the, the sub audio guy has Wait, to. Let me go back, I really I wanted this. to touch on. Oh boy. This guy. Uh, I think his name. What's his What's his name there? Uh, uh, Token Allen. Is it? Is his real name Ethan? Ethan. 
I can't Ethan. believe he's wearing Ethan, the yeah. Ethan? Is it the H? Yeah, yeah. It's Ethan. 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 What is it then? Ethan. Ethan. <laughs> Ethan. What? Ah. what is this? Is this a gag? He Maybe it's like a gag. Like Maybe it's a gag. You're the you're the audio guy. But I don't Ethan see them Klein laughing. Maybe. No. I love how the the sub audio guy has to. No, I'm seeing podcasts right when they're saying it. Look, anyone can do a podcast. Ethan Klein, right? Uh, so this is H three H three. It's like a popular podcast on YouTube, yeah. and. Um, this is kind of when people criticize podcasts, right? When they're saying, hey, "Look, anyone can do a podcast," and it's super original. It used to be with radio or television, you had to find the interesting. Yeah, and I understand <laughs> that, but I also have a problem with gatekeepers because sometimes there were interesting yeah. people who couldn't make it through the gatekeepers because they were too controversial, right. right? But then there were some people who have no business really being on air because they don't offer anything. So this exhibit here of H3H3 H3 Productions <laughs> is is perfect. It's like, you know this, when you've done stand-up, right, and then every stand-up comedian is like, I do a podcast, people go like, oh yeah, my husband's unemployed too. Yes, of course. <laughs> right? There's over one million. Did right. you know that? Yeah. Right. It doesn't surprise me. Dude, this is like so funny that there's so many people with podcasts, but not many of them are good. Right. That's an observation that is super unique yeah. and new. Right, right. <sighs> Did that one hurt, hurt Ethan? Are you hurt? Yeah, it did hurt. Okay. It hurt a lot. You know. What did you call him? Steven Ethan, Schroeder. E no, Eli. Your name is Ethan? Eth oh, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan. Even Trump knows how to say my name, Ethan. Steven. Ethan? Steven? Is his name St Stefan? De Stephen? Steven. Good. Steven? They, they were uh, upset. About Joe Rogan, I guess, something, something Joe Rogan talking about masks. I just think. This is one of the most po one of the more popular podcasts on YouTube, from what I understand. I don't think I've ever seen a more perfect encapsulation. So he's calling uh, our podcast one of the more popular ones, but at the same time, uh, we have no uh, no, no business yeah. doing a podcast. Ethan, and he's never Ethan, heard of it. Yeah, Ethan, even though he tried Ethan, to get on it multiple Ethan, times, he tried to get you on his Ethan. show yeah. multiple times. Such a fucking goon. I I think it's so fun when people pretend like they don't know someone. Like, bro, come on, don't fuck. Ethan. Just say, I know him. I know about him. I don't like him. It's fine. Of groupthink and discouraging any sort of critical thinking whatsoever and laughing about it with no self-awareness. This is my favorite clip uh, of guys, the year. Okay. Let's roll. This, this guy wants to talk about self-awareness while he's sitting there with that oh. holster <laughs> on And a box shoulders. of tissue next to him. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, why do you have a box of tissue? Like, how much do you need tissue? How much tissue does he use in a show? <laughs> That's a good question. Like, I have this tissue in my house, like, in the bathroom. But you're on set. You're recording. You're not going to need Who a has gun. Who a tissue next to them? What's with the holster? <laughs> Unless he's really just wearing it as an accessory, which is also pretty bad. No, it's part of the grift. It's like, I'm one of you. I'm a yeah. badass. All right. I so. was, I'm an I'm a L.A.-based comedian, but I'm Ethan, not one of the coastal yeah. elites. He's just Ooh. such a hot target that someone might burst in trying to shoot him. Even during the right, show, right. I don't think he's in he's LA. He's a walking target. Just to just to correct you on that, I think, oh, I think he lives in, in Texas LA? or some shit. Of course, I feel like he's like a. Where's he from? I'll, I'll fact check it, but I, I don't think he does his show from Los Angeles. Ooh. Ethan. All right. Anyway, this is his exactly. favorite clip of the year. I'm glad he enjoyed it. Maybe there's a reason it's one of the most popular podcasts. Right. I mean, <laughs> even if we can dissatisfy you this much. Yeah, uh, he's based in Dallas. Oh. Woo! Oh, boy. Oh, why did I have to <laughs> say it? Oh, Joe no. Rogan out here in Texas, boy. We're coming, we coming up now, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I got my tissues wait, and my gun. Wait, from Canada? He's oh, yeah, Canadian. he's Canadian. Yeah. Oh, my God. Is he really? Yeah, yeah he's Canadian. We need to, we need to was, stop letting them in. I we need like, to stop letting uh, them in. I'm saying he's born in Detroit. Uh oh, really? AB. Detroit? But people say that he's Canadian all the time. Yeah, what the fuck? How A citizenship, yeah, is from Canada. His uh, Wikipedia okay. says he's an American Canadian conservative political commentator, okay. so I don't know. He, he, has know dual, he has dual citizenship. We kicked him out. <laughs> all I know is that I, once I'm done shooting my gum, I'm going to wipe the tears away because, boy, is that scary. <laughs> Woo! Ethan. Ethan. <laughs> Ethan. All right. all right, let's watch. Let's watch. Let's watch. <laughs> you gotta wear a mask so i'm out there wearing a mask yeah. wow big deal and then now they say you know if you're outside you don't Wait need to wear it. a mask it's pretty simple you want to talk about it. dumb hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a whole, there's a whole, the CDC is like this whole governmental body with scientists and shit that just tell us what to do. You don't have to think about it, dude. <laughs> 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 okay. Now, first of all, he shows like, he's made this whole declaration that we have no business doing podcasts. This is all he watches in this. It's like five seconds. Mm -hmm. Obviously, my point is that if you're so fucking stupid, then yeah, you should listen to the CDC, bro. It's their, like, I don't understand this assumption that he, like, you these fucking cheap. rednecks understand more than, than doctors who have spent their whole life studying ep like disease hey man he's googled epi he's googled around for 10 minutes dude yeah he's, Ethan, he's not anti-vax he's just asking questions right? <laughs> Ethan, so... right anyway i'm getting ahead of myself let me play it you think that was rehearsed the because <laughs> he's definitely watched it <laughs> after dark <laughs> Seriously, they just tell you. You don't have to think about it, dude. Come on. By the way, do what I they mean, tell you. My, my rule is, right, whatever we say, always just extend the context a minute in either direction. It only gets worse. But he, he says that, but he didn't show anything else we talked about. I don't know. Does he no, I watched it. He doesn't. Because <laughs> I was like, I hope he does show the context because he gets, like, all the basis of facts wrong. Oh, no. But listen, but like I was like, dude, you could have at least showed more of the clip. <laughs> Honestly, it doesn't even matter. So stupid. Why is he questioning uh, any like the CDC or Fauci? Yeah, seriously, bro. You're not a doctor. I don't even. I don't want to think about things. Bro, do you fucking question like, let's say the the the. Uh, God, it's so dumb. It's like so. <laughs> do you go to the doctor and then he? Bro, I literally can't. Do you go to the pharmacy and overlook their? You be like, oh, is that the right medicine? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, there's certain people in this world that we don't need to fucking, that we, especially when you're such a dumbass and you don't understand how disease prevention works, then you should be listening to Dr. Fauci and the, and the CDC. Also, yes. I mean, it makes sense too, so I choose to listen to it, you know, it's right. logical. They're not telling me, um, go jump off a building and I'm like, well, this doesn't make sense, but I'll do it anyway. They're saying wear a mask during a pandemic. Pretty with obvious, a disease that simple. spreads that spreads through the air, like it's so, it's pretty easy. It's kind of logical. Logic. Yeah. So I kind of don't have a problem listening to people who know what they're talking about when they also are making sense. It, yeah, it also makes sense. People who are vaccinated and people who wear masks. If you look at like Taiwan and New Zealand, or like you know Asian countries where mask wearing is is uh, prevalent, there's no fucking disease, bro. Everything makes sense. So you don't need to question every single fucking thing that comes up in your life, dude. I think that's part of your problems. But we're just... When you look at ingredients on your food, do you go to the packing uh, uh, plant and, and, and then re-examine everything? He probably grows only his own food. Keep playing. Mm. Want to watch more? <laughs> <laughs> Why is his homie dressed up as Peter Pan, too? His homie's dressed as Peter Pan. There's a tissue on the table. He's got a gun, which is, you know is a youth, which is just like a metaphor for cock. Maybe. These guys fuck. It's got to be some sort of inside joke. I'm maybe no, they're, sure they're shifting. Something. Maybe they're shifting. They're oh, shifting. maybe they're, they're shifting. shifting. <laughs> they're definitely shifting. Crowder wants to be the little uh, never boys. Right. What are they called? The lost boys. Yeah, the he's lost. a lost boy for sure. Do what people tell me. And we just went through with Fauci how he went from it occurred in nature. Yeah. Oh, no, it may have happened in a lab. They've been wrong. So you could, if you do that, there are many instances where you could have made yourself very sick. Well, yeah, when do What? From what? From wearing a mask? From wearing a mask? Yeah. Car oh. What are you oh, talking about? I have about? so much regret that I wore. Yeah. Oh, well, my God. I wore a I, mask. I, I can't believe I wore a mask during that pandemic. Oh, that was so fucking stupid of me. <laughs> I should never have listened to these scientists that spent their whole life studying this. I got to think for myself. Um, I, I get all of my information from Facebook groups, <laughs> free thinkers. I don't know. They always do that. They always try to undermine uh, Fauci's uh, his whole credibility. Because in the beginning, he said, "Don't you don't need to wear a mask," and then he said, "You do need to wear a mask." And like he changed his mind based on. The situation, right? And they act like you can never change your fucking mind on anything. Otherwise, it proves that you're lying and that you should never listen to them. He's like, listen to listen to Dr. Fauci, bro. Yes, especially you, dumbass. Ethan. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Trump. Can you say that? What was that? Ethan. Ethan? What's that Ethan? word? Eth what does Ethan? that word mean? Eth Ethan. Never heard that Ethan? sound before. <laughs> 
always questioning <laughs> everything, even how to read the name. Bro, you mm -hmm. think that tissue's made of paper? Pfft. You just trust what the what the tissue people tell you? Ethan? You trust that coffee you're drinking? You just trust? Sheep? <laughs> you you could be making decisions that could impact your health forever by trusting that that's coffee. I don't trust that that's coffee unless I that could what could be in that coffee? You don't know. Ethan. By the way, I think it's a beautiful thing when um, science will change something. They'll be like, "Hey, we know we know now that something is different than we knew before." Yeah, that's a beautiful thing because they have data and they learn. Right. It's a great thing. Right. No, but if you ever change your mind, that's the one thing that's that, like, proof that there's a conspiracy and that they're idiots and that you need to think for yourself. <laughs> do I follow them? <laughs> At what point along the chain of their changing their always. mind do I go? Every well, time, that's the way I should go. Every single time, you should always follow their advice from before and after they change their opinion, <laughs> and not from a Facebook group that tells you that Bill Gates is putting a microchip in your shoulder. Oh, nope, sorry, that's the way I should you're, go. You're, you didn't understand his last half. Uh, you don't even have to think about it, dude. <laughs> exactly. It's that simple. They're <laughs> scientists that spent their whole fucking life, bro. Imagine you, couldn't, you wouldn't even have to make this video if you just didn't even think about it. When people smarter than you that dedicated their whole life to scientific research, you look at all the stress and strain on him that could have been prevented. You don't even have to think about it. I agree. They're just, they like to think a lot. <laughs> Try to think, but nothing happens. Exactly. <laughs> when you think and nothing happens, then you should listen to the CDC. That's my point. I was watching his, uh, Hassan reacted uh, to this clip, and he said he, used, he doesn't see Crowder usually get this worked up, so he was impressed that I got him so triggered. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of fun. Nice. Well, somebody pointed out, and we didn't realize it when we were talking about it last night, that um, I believe it was the same episode that you first mentioned what you just went into, the fact that Crowder had tried to get you on the show. Right. So I have a suspicion that that is what this is really about. Is He's that, butt hurt that yeah, I ghosted him exactly. and I outed him. Come on, bro. Try to think, but nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> You're already too far out of the prison that he set. They tell you what to do. You don't even have to think about it, dude. Look. That's not a good rule of thumb no. for anything in life, <laughs> but they act like... Man, it's a good rule. I mean, yeah, when you're as dumb as you that can't understand shit and you're, like, literally becoming a biohazard, you should listen to CDC, bro. I know that. I mean, what's the point of government if we don't trust these whole institutions that we've propped up, funded? Regulated. Well, they, you don't even, are, this, this, the whole society they, breaks down. You don't have to blindly follow it, even. I mean, it, yeah, you can obviously. think critically about it. We're but like talking Ela's about said. a mask. It yeah. makes sense. This is very straightforward. This is We're not, not talking about, like, yeah. oh, going and getting a second um, second opinion from a second doctor. Not chopping off your leg, like, bro. Right. You have a big surgery to do. Fine, of course. <laughs> if the advice was extreme and We're seemed talking and about you eyebrow your raising, brain. yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it is common sense. It's just common sense. Even I don't think these guys should think, and I stand by that. <laughs> the less they think, the better off we all yeah, are. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I really, truly believe that. You know, like, there's so much governmental bodies that tell us what to do that we don't think about. And they don't walk around Drugs, with holsters. Food, <laughs> you know, I trust all this science there. and shit that goes on. Does Steven wear a seatbelt? When he drives a car, does he... <laughs> that seatbelt's over pussies. He probably doesn't. <laughs> he's got, a, he's he's got a his giant strap. pussy. Yeah. His holster has a little clip on. There you right. go. He just... Everyone in here is the idiot. Are, are there any... I didn't say that, but yeah. Any people that watch <laughs> this podcast, is it like... Does it have... Like... I think it's relative. Yeah, yeah. it's popular. Seriously? Hey, here's how I guarantee I think you I just I wanted Ethan? to be on it. Uh... Ethan? <laughs> It's so, uh, I think it's popular. I did invite him three times. I begged him to come on my show. I love how the dude in, in the big green polo is saying, does anyone watch this? He's the one trying to, to bag on it. Yeah. Fucking Peter Pan ass looking motherfucker. <laughs> Maybe it's Tell me you touch kids without telling me you touch kids. <laughs> <laughs> His homie here. Maybe it's a Halloween party. He's Peter Pan. Uh, Crowder is uh, Indiana Jones with the 
Oh, you think they're out there, yeah. I seem to recall seeing him in that outfit before. I think maybe that's just his thing on the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shifting. he hangs out at schools after work. <laughs> He's shifting, Dan. Come on. Yeah. He's shifting, <laughs> right? He's a shifter. He's a shifter. He's shifting to a world where it's acceptable to hang out with young boys all day. I think it's relative. Yeah, yeah. it's popular. Seriously? Hey, here's how I'll guarantee you something. If there's a guy and a, a man and a woman, I should say, on one side of the desk and the woman is in a sideways hat, uh, uh, everything they're saying is useless. <laughs> sideways hat? God, we, we were wearing the fucking Bass Pro Shop hats. <laughs> we were wearing the Bass Pro Shop hats. Because I went back, I was like, wait, what is he talking about? Because I had to go back. So, because here oh, you're wearing the Bass oh. Pro Shop hat. <laughs> But like this, this guy's a comedian. This guy's oh a. My God. That's, a oh, wow. that's your rule, bro. That's a rule. <laughs> uh, here's here's a rule. Anytime you're in a room with a dude dressed like Peter Pan, and a dude with a <laughs> and with a holster with an holster? empty holster, then you're either you're either you're either fucking doing. But to be fair, we were wearing it ironically. Of course, that's why they missed the context yeah. of literally everything, and they continue. <laughs> yeah, what happened was Jorgen said, "Why is this girl? Uh, she's out rule she's of thumb no. for anything in life." <laughs> But they act like everyone in here is the idiot. Yes. Are, are there yep. any people that watch this podcast? Is it like... Yes, Peter it have, I think it's relative. Yeah, yeah. it's popular. Seriously? Hey, here's how I'll guarantee you something. If there's a guy and a, a man and a woman, I should say, on one side of the desk and the woman is in a sideways hat, uh, uh, everything they're saying is useless. <laughs> <laughs> he does not... He doesn't talk it's like he's thought about anything yeah. in life. Well, that's no, what's funny that you like... just... Because she went after Joe Rogan because apparently I think he made fun of her hat or her mask oh, or something. Oh, are you her serious? Hat? Yeah, what happened was Joe Rogan said, why is this girl... Uh, she's outside and she's wearing a double mask. She's like, yeah, I was wearing... I love how it turns into double mask. It's like, not the facts double mask. just change. Yeah. The fact is, it was at Whitney Cummings' party. She was wearing one mask. This was at the height of the pandemic when gathering was, like, basically illegal, I think. Everyone, in LA. everyone got tested. Fine. But still, I chose to wear a mask. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Your mask. You just is listen me to the CDC. You sheep. You just listen to scientists. Have a yeah. whole governmental body that spent its entire, it's full of people dedicated to learning about disease prevention Please and viruses. Yeah. You presume to know more than them. Well, you know, well, yeah. yeah. Wearing the double mask because where did he get the double he's... mask? <laughs> exactly, he's just exaggerating right. shit. Because call yeah. the police like, immediately. He says, if you watch, if you watch a, oh right, <laughs> these guys are so mental, bro. That's a uh, Tucker saying, if you see a kid wearing a mask, call the police. Child, yeah, <laughs> child abuse. Yes, child abuse. Child abuse. Child um, abuse. Man. Yeah, it turns into double. He says, if you watch it a minute before or after, it's even worse. I was like, then show it, dipshit. He doesn't. Because apparently, I think he made fun of her hat or her mask oh, or something. Are you serious? Really? Yeah, what happened was Joe Rogan said, why is this girl, uh, she's outside and she's wearing a double mask. She's like, yeah, I was wearing the double mask because at that time, the CDC was saying, even if you're vaccinated, you have to wear a double mask. So I wore a double mask. Nope, yeah. didn't say any of that. The CDC never even said <laughs> no, you had to there wear was a double no mask. Vaccine, no, the vaccine didn't exist when that yeah. incident happened. No, I know. He's, I'm just saying, he, every single detail. Every what he's yeah, single exactly. Detail is so Dumb. Yeah, he misses every single detail. What happened yeah. was Jorgen said, why is this girl, uh, she's outside and she's wearing a double mask. She's like, yeah, I was wearing the double mask because at that time the CDC was saying, even if you're vaccinated, you, he you literally have to wear a double mask. Even if you're vaccinated, yeah. no. Nope. He didn't you even, even watch know it. what you're talking about. He didn't even watch it. <laughs> Not a single thing was Try correct. Think, but nothing like, yet this was his favorite <laughs> clip. This was his favorite clip of, of the, the entire year. year. And yet he didn't even watch it. <laughs> Fucking awesome. You're going to need one of those tissues. <laughs> <laughs> That may have Don't been even... from a bit or something. The tissue? Well, just... Nah, he, bro. He said the thing about the hat. I don't want to make the same mistake. You know what I mean? Mmm. Super high-level thinking. Well, at least I'm watching the part that's relevant to what... True. He's, I watched the whole segment about me. <laughs> Right. I, that's not true, Dan. I'm watching the whole fucking segment. <laughs> if his homie happens to be dressed as Peter Pan and he's got <laughs> jerk-off tissues on the clip, that's fair game for me. Because right, I'm enough. watching the whole damn thing. Fair enough. Thank you. <laughs> Get me fired up here. <laughs> Think about it, dude. I wear a double hat, both sides. Imagine, and look, imagine if... Who, who is turning that guy's fun mic? of my accent? Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> Why does this guy even have a douche. microphone? Like, this guy's supposed to be a comedian. Oh, my you're God. You're enemy number one. You're, like, you're foreign and you're a woman. Yep, right. exactly. And you're outspoken. And you have a sideways hat. Right, mm. right. I oh. made it to America. His ass is Canadian, so what the fuck's he talking about? His ass is foreign. Yeah. Right.
Uh, I saw a lot of comments uh, earlier from our Canadian fans saying we do not claim him. So we, we don't want him. We, I don't want him. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> well, shit. Man I, I don't know that. what to do with him. Texas is like, yeah, that's our boy Crowder. <laughs> no, I love uh, every Canadian person that I met. So I don't think I don't hold it against you guys. <laughs> Except him. Yeah. Except him. That was applied. Uh, any, I mean, that's exact. Mao is China. Yeah. Dude, this Russia. is when he goes like so off the rails. I don't, I don't China. Even, I'm not even following his logic anymore. Mao is China. What? Uh, he goes from Hila <laughs> wearing a mask, a double mask, while she's vaccinated. Which, <laughs> that, well, <laughs> yeah, right. Which none of that is true. But he goes to Hila wearing a mask during a pandemic with an airborne virus, and listening to the CDC, to Maoist China. USSR. I mean, but that is what. That's what. The, in other words, the government would come in and try and recondition you. That's right? exactly what Goebbels listen, wanted. Yeah. You may hear things that speak out against government, but you are not to listen to them. Hey, listen. I don't even want to think about it, dude. <sighs> what is he? Why, I, um, I, I'm, I'm straining to understand. He's just, I mean, <laughs> it always comes down to he uh, think, co you're communist for wanting to wear a mask. Okay. He's saying <laughs> that's that. Very or American. He's using the CDC of. Well, uh, no. He's saying like your your mentality of listen to the government is is what happens in a totalitarian communist state. I was just saying that it's a bit of a stretch to say to that. wear a mask, bro. <laughs> yeah. During what a air, the during a pandemic and with an airborne virus. Yeah. What the fuck? Again, it does we're, 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 we're pretty thirty we're, how many people were dying a day at the peak uh, during around that time? It was like thir it was like uh, ten thousand people a day. Something, yeah. I mean a it's lot. fucking crazy, bro. But somehow that's me uh, that's Maoist China. By the way, we've experienced it ourselves. We've been around people that had it, and while we weren't wearing a mask, we didn't catch it. So right, had some close calls. It's like I'm I You're I, Maoist, I, bro. I I do follow the guidelines, but it also makes sense. That's the bottom and you had, line. Yeah, and you had. If you have half experience. a brain, yeah. well, that's why I'm even saying that because it. it's like, when did the CDC ask anybody to like? chop off an arm to prevent you know what i'm saying like they're not asking you to do crazy shit they literally said wear a mask and keep six feet apart from people is that really it's asking so to like it's execute so little to ask. neighbor yes uh... it's so little to ask even <laughs> it's not maoist china bro we don't need slide presentation. Go I'm to not from office. Russia. Yeah. Yeah, well, he, I guess he's, he's, he's just trying to just, do the... Yeah, yeah. The Russian, Russians are communists. The communists. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Got it. Vladimir Putin. <laughs> I don't know if he was making... Don't let him hear you say Vladimir Putin. He'll know. <laughs> Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Who's that? Vladimir I've never heard of Ru uh, Russia. Who's the leader of Russia? Uh, Vladimir, Vladimir Putin. Putin. Vladimir Putin. <laughs> I've never heard of the guy. Putin. <laughs> Perfect pronunciation. Exactly. It's great. They just said don't think in so many words. Yeah. yeah. We including the words don't and think. Yeah. This guy's joke too. don't hit. <laughs> he doesn't hit. He's never. I don't even understand. You don't say. Yeah, okay. Well, listen. We're going to take your crops now, and uh, good luck with the weight loss. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> listen. Yeah. If you. If we... What? It's just wearing a mask, bro. It's not stealing your crops. You know. Vladimir no, you want to Putin. think. You don't even have to think about it, dude. <laughs> and they're the kind Also, last I checked, like, I mean, American democracy has, like, in terms... I mean, we're not in Russia, dog. Why are you so skeptical about this country? He's apparently this great patriot, but he's so skeptical. He's, like, of the institution of his own country. That he's comparing the CDC to fucking... Russians to stealing food from peasants. Yeah, you know, when this party happened and... Hila was following the guidelines and everything. Uh, Donald Trump was president, and this was his administration's advice that he was following. Like, this is his guy. Mm. Right. <laughs> you know? It's not... Impossible. It's not Easy. communism, dude. Donald Trump's vaccinated. He got that real quick. He got those stem cell babies shot right into his fucking eyeballs. <laughs> you know Easy. what I mean? Donald Trump knows COVID's real. Yeah. People, you know those people where, let's say you make a self-deprecating joke, and, yes. you, and then you say something like, I meant to do that, and then there's that girl who thinks she's really clever, she's like, yeah, right, like, no, he didn't, it's like, oh, you caught something, this is what that yeah. is, like, you don't even have to think I about it, dude, what people out analogy? there, I literally, I'm not following, I'm not following. <laughs> he's okay. getting, this is what, like, he's getting so worked up, yeah. and you can tell his homie is not, is just, 
not on the same page. And then you say something like, I meant to do that. And then there's that girl who thinks she's really clever. She's like, yeah, right. Homie like, does no, not he follow. didn't. It's like, oh, you caught something. This is what that yeah. is. Like, you don't even have to think yeah. about it, dude. People right. out there are thinking. <laughs> Why? If a few more people had like thought about it, we'd probably have a lot more European <laughs> Jews alive, a lot more Russians alive, a lot more Cambodians alive, listen a lot more this, Chinese alive. The They've all, no, listen to this guy. Like, oh, listen to Peter Pan. Something. This is what that yeah. is. Like, you don't even have to think about it, dude. People out there are thinking. <laughs> Why? Look how wet his <laughs> lip is. Why is his lip so wet? Right? Oh, my God. He's salivating. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't notice that the first time. Look at it, dude. I'm gonna <laughs> slow down. Slobbering idiot. Here, <laughs> let me go to, twenty. you know, 25 speed. Let's get nice and close. Oh, no. Oh, no. Thinking. It gets nice and juicy lips. <laughs> Look. If a few oh, God. <laughs> so wet. We probably Ethan. Have a... uh, thank you. Anyway, now, now listen to Peter Pan. This this one makes even less sense than everything else they've been saying. A lot more European Jews alive. A lot more Russians alive. A lot more Cambodians alive. A lot more Chinese alive. They've all been massacred because people didn't think about it. Okay. okay. So Why? the Holocaust happened. Yeah, because... okay. yeah. Who didn't think about it? Is that a little people, drama? Just people. Just people didn't think about well, it. The reason the Holocaust happened I is because people didn't even, think about it, dude. I can't even process Who didn't the... think about it? The Jews? People. You're not following. <laughs> You're not following what he's saying. The, the Pol Pot, <laughs> Cambodia, millions of people dead. People didn't think about it, dude. <laughs> what, what didn't they think about? <laughs> I'm pretty sure there was plenty of people thinking about how fucked up it was. <laughs> and had no power to control their no, destiny. No. Like, imagine the Jews on the train to Auschwitz. Is this he is, trying to uh, say, they, like, that the Nazi uh, soldiers were just following orders? Is I that am a, the point? That's the only logical explanation. I guess. that okay. That's a better explanation than it, it's the Jews' fault, because they just didn't think about it. <laughs> well, it, it could like, go well, either I, way. Though. I guess I'll just get on this train. No, yeah, I won't like, think oh, about it. This is awesome, dude. Yeah, right. This rules. <laughs> Putting on a I'm mask. I'm just going to dig this ditch while my whole family starves to death. This rules. Russians alive, a lot more Cambodians alive, a lot more Chinese alive. They've all been massacred because people didn't think about it, okay? Yeah. Hey, hon, let's do a podcast where we... People didn't think Hold about on, it. Let, let's listen Just think to about the comedian. We talk about things that we don't think about. You know what this guy is? He's like a fucking thrift store Patton Oswalt. <laughs> he looks just <laughs> like him, but he's just... I see it. Not, I, I, I see he, it. He's just... Damn. Okay, so here's another hot take from... From Dollar Store Patent. Where we Oswald. talk about things that we don't think about. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that your podcast? <laughs> Got him. Oh. <laughs> Fucking. Oh! <laughs> you didn't think much about the clip. You didn't even watch it, bro. You know what? Let's just, let's just not think and broadcast. <laughs> what could go wrong? Hey, Follow us on Instagram, hey, by the way, or follow well, me on this. Instagram, uh, because... Uh, you know. Look at this fucking dude! He's such beta energy with the fucking cigar, yeah. the all, holster. All these dudes, God. the cigar thing is just... The overcompensation yeah. is real. It's is this guy crazy. trying to dress like Marty McFly, or is that actually <laughs> an outfit he wears? <laughs> like... No, that, he has to be trying, because that is actually That's Marty. literally Marty McFly. Oh, yeah. yeah, that is Marty Okay. <laughs> Dude, he wears a cigar. He's so alpha, bro. Right. So sick. It's so fucking manly to just have a big brown turd in your mouth all the time. <laughs> Dude, awesome. and a holster? Man. This guy thinks about everything. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot about to talk about Crowder, though. Because we have, like, a whole fucking dossier on this idiot. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. I, we had kind of been toying with this idea, and I gotta say, I'm seeing a lot... Of comments in the chat. Can I take court? I'm seeing a lot of comments mm -hmm. court requests. Mm -hmm. If you could, if you yeah, could pick maybe. one of these to watch, which one should I watch, or should I? Uh, of of the cringe. Um, you know what's funny? The one where he has the quartering on is pretty funny, just because it's hilarious that he thinks the quartering is somebody worth having on his show. Fucking quartering. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe we should save it. Maybe we should save it. I just peed in my basement. Just <laughs> ripped a fat one. Did you yeah, that was fucking super loud. Holy shit! I practice. I get really good because Theodore loves it. <laughs> oh well, if he you gets do it for yourself, so stuff. fucking amused when I fart loud. Yeah. Like the best part of his day. Yeah, I'm excited to sound about it. And then he goes more, more. <laughs> like I could fart on command. That's pretty cute.
Ooh, stink uh, too. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> we've been talking. We've been talking about Crowder for long enough. In my yeah, opinion. yeah. I think okay, we'll do a Crowder fun. content yeah. card. That'd be fun. Uh, I'll just. This is. This is uh, not going to make sense to a lot of people, but just because I feel like there's a decent chance Stephen Crowder will see this, and this will be the only time that I get to say this. Debate Sam Cedar, dude. Stop being such a pussy. <laughs> uh, I know that your dad doesn't want you to, uh, and you know, but that was a long time ago. That was three. You're you're three years older now. It's time. It's time to debate Sam. So, do you want to give some context to that, Dan? <laughs> he. Uh, <laughs> There's a political uh, uh, YouTube channel called The Majority Report, and the host, Sam Cedar, uh, is one of those, like, like Steven Crowder, he's a guy who likes to debate. And um, they had scheduled a debate at a big political convention uh, called Politicon uh, that they, you know, it was all like arranged and it was settled and everything. And um, Sam got a call, which he recorded and played on his show, uh, which is what makes it so good. So we, <laughs> we can validate this story. Um, where they explained that Steven had backed out and had gotten cold feet, which <laughs> earned him a nickname, Cold Feet Crowder. Which <laughs> go to any of his tweets on Twitter <laughs> is just, to this day, it's full of that. Uh, and, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then they revealed that it was, that his, like, handler, his agent, is basically his dad, and his dad called them and was like, he can't do it. He, so why did now. he, why, probably because he knew he was going to Because get Sam Cedar destroyed. isn't, yeah, he's not a fucking 19-year-old college student. He's, he thought this he might He actually knows what career. he's talking about. Yeah, he was going to get embarrassed. And, um. His daddy said no. Yeah, his daddy, daddy said no. His daddy's looking out for him, so, um. Daddy, do you like my holster? <laughs> Does it make me look big and tough? So I don't know. I never thought I would get the opportunity to send a message directly to <laughs> Crowder, and so I'm using this opportunity to say, Debate, Daddy. Debate Sam Cedar, please. <laughs> Fucking owned. Good shit, Dan. He's gonna get two more holsters on his legs now. <laughs> Daddy, you, if, Daddy, do you like my holsters? I'm gonna get a new holster that you like so I can look masculine and you'll be proud of me. Daddy, Daddy? is it okay if I invite Ethan on my show? <laughs> Daddy? He had to he had to put that invitation through with Daddy first. Daddy? Daddy. Anyway, that's about it. These guys are all these guys are all grifters though. It's so easy to be a conservative on YouTube. You just say like the most obvious shit. Black people deserve to be black people are violent criminals. There's no such thing as systemic racism. Well, it's not that easy, COVID apparently. We want freedom for the world. His channel might get determinated. So. Right. <laughs> it's risky business. But they love that too. They get to be the victims. <laughs> COVID isn't real. Dr. Fauci eats babies, apparently. Victory, See, victory, I could do this victory. whole stick. I should do, man, I should start like a Colbert Report. I miss that show. <laughs> where I just do like a, I should make a character that's just a fake conservative. So, uh, what do we start with? Should we do this chronologically? Or do we do, uh, do we do, we go reverse we chronology? Save, uh, maybe reverse chronology. Yes, I think we'll save the, the more uh, media friendly for, for a second. So, Back in May, I got an uh, email. Oh, no, this must have been the, the first one must have come actually, I think, in uh, April from a guy named Jim. And he wrote, hello, Sam Cedar team. My name is Jim and I work for freespeech.tv. This is a new network being launched on June 1st. We're wondering if Sam would accept our invite to be on the show. The show is a panel discussion that will have a conservative and a liberal on every show to discuss current events in politics for about an hour. The show is called Free Speech and will be hosted by Gavin McGinnis. We can pay Sam's for Sam's travel and stay, plus pay him $5,000 to be on the show. You should have gotten a hotel in Midtown, bro. We have a lot of big names on both sides of the aisle, I-S-L-E, that have agreed to be on. We're hoping Sam can too. C-O. So I got very suspicious on this. Now, whenever I get suspicious, what I do is um, I send it off. Uh, I, I say, I'm not going to answer this. Uh, I'm going to have Patrick answer it. Patrick, who works, uh, you never hear me reference him because he works in the basement here at uh, the jury board. We just bring him out to uh, just look at it. So um, so Patrick responds and says, oh, yeah, uh, Sam's, uh, you know, could be interested. Uh, tell us more. Jim writes back, what nights, and this is May 21st, what nights in June? Oh, okay, so we talk and this and that, and, and at one point he says, um, 
Uh, oh, yeah, here he goes. Okay. So, hello, Patrick. Thank you for getting back to us. The show is being filmed in a professional studio in downtown Manhattan. There will be makeup because Patrick was very concerned that I <laughs> needed makeup. Patrick throws a lot of shade at you. Yeah, Patrick is. No, he, but Patrick was like, well, Sam wants to know if there's going to be makeup. Uh, I mean, I was just curious, like, what the heck is going on here? And, uh, and so um, uh, there will be makeup. About 30 guests is in the audience. The show will be shown on Free Speech TV, but we'll be putting up some interesting parts of the show on YouTube. The show is all about having conservative and liberal ideals being represented in long form, hour long discussion. I saw Sam's interview with Glenn Greenwald the other day. That was awesome. This is kind of the same idea. The guests maybe not agree on some of the current political topics discussed, but we do it in a fun and respectable manner where both perspectives are shared on any given topic. Is this now, person ESL? Like they keep using the wrong word for things. Well, I don't know, uh, but I have a feeling that Jim is not really Jim. Uh, maybe you guys should lay you? off Jim. I think Jim used to work at Vice. Um, I think Jim yes. has a drinking problem. We want the viewers from right to left to be able to do both sides, not feel like they're watching another Fox News or MSNBC echo chamber. Gavin would be the host of the show. And the two guests will be a liberal and conservative on each show. We're shooting two episodes a month for a year so we can work around Sam's schedule. Um, is there a... Well, there, yeah. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> is there a particular conservative guest... Sam would like to be on the panel with, we could make it work. Steven Crowder might be a good pairing, for instance, and he is willing to do the show. Ooh. I have noticed a lot of Sam's fans want Sam to debate Steven. This could be perfect forum for that. We're getting a great response. Blah, 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 blah. The psychos, we could do a conference call with Gavin if you guys wanted to. Now, here's where I think, like, oh, this is real. Uh, then Jim writes, don't go to this yet on may 21st what nights in june will work for sam we ideally are going to shoot in the city around 8 p.m friday it allows the studio blah 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 thank you greatly jim patrick responds hi jim sam says whatever night crowder is there works for him p patrick and uh jim responds on may 21st at 321 p.m awesome thank you we'll be back soon with dates then on may 30th we haven't heard anything. And I say to Patrick, Patrick, what's the deal? And, and he writes on May 30th, hey, Jim, Sam just asked, what's up? Do we have a date yet? And then on May 30th, 11.32 a.m., uh, thanks for following up. I'm sorry it's taken so long. I'm working hard on it, and we are in dialogue over it with Crowder. I will know more in coming days. I will get back to you for sure. Thanks again. I think it'll be awesome when it happens. I think Sam is hilarious. Thanks, Jim. Patrick, you tell Jim that I said thank you. But then June 3rd comes around. And uh, Patrick, I almost said me. Hey, and Patrick writes, <laughs> hey, Jim, any word? Question mark. And Jim writes back on June 3rd. Yep. Made some progress over the weekend. Hope to have an answer for you guys at the end of the week. Thanks so much. I just want this as just as bad as you slash Sam want it. And then on June 9th. Jim writes, we tried hard, man, but he just won't do it with Sam. Very disappointing. <laughs> Is there anyone else that Sam might want to be on the show with? Just a couple ideas. Ann Coulter lined up on the 26th. We could offer Boring. Sam. Also, what about Jimmy Bo Dore? We've been talking to him. Thank you, Jim. Oh, my God. Where is the Trump cuck, 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 cuck? And oh. so Patrick writes back, oof. I'll ask him about the others. What happened with Crowder? He won't do your show or won't do it with Sam. Did he give a reason why? Sam's going to be cranky with me, which is true. I was really cranky when Patrick told me this. And, um, and then uh, Patrick, uh, I, I didn't get a response. And I was like, Patrick, what's the deal? And so he writes to Jim on June 12th. Hey, Jim, so now Sam thinks I messed up somehow on the Crowder thing. And that's why it's not happening. He didn't really react when I mentioned any of the other names. I can press him again, though. I'm sorry, Patrick. I was so cranky and wanted to Klobuchar-esque. Well, I thought that I said to Patrick, I said, hey, man, did you screw this up? Because I wanted to debate Crowder. And he's like, no, I didn't. And I said, are you sure? And he's like, no. And so that's why he wrote Jim that way. Then you threw a chair at him. And then Jim wrote back. All right, man. 
I know you guys are going to be pissed, but here it is, what we got out of Crowder. Crowder said he has 4 million YouTube followers and Sam has 500K followers. We already up to now 650,000. Growing fast, faster yeah. than Crowder. Wow. And he didn't want Sam trying to ride in on his coattails of hard work, blood, sweat, and death threats just to lend his not notoriety to Sam, which would help Sam gain some of his followers. And Crowder hates Sam for some reason, so he doesn't <laughs> want to help Sam. I believe that part. I do too. Now, the funny part is, now, of course, like... Wait a second. Crowder's willing to lend his brand out to unknown college kids. Well, Imagine that's the point. what they can capitalize on. I happen to know for a fact that there's never been a single college kid that Steven Crowder has debated that has even close to 4 million YouTube followers. In fact, I will bet that I have more YouTube followers than any college student that he has ever debated. And... I would also argue that he probably, anybody that he was going to go on with on Gavin's show, and I don't know, has he appeared on Gavin's show? Why don't we look that up? Don't have much more followers than I do. Maybe by, I don't know, 10%, 30 you know, 20%, but not 400%. Anyways, Crowder was supposed to be on our show last week, so this had nothing to do with Gavin. It's just Sam unpopularity with Steven. So it appears the Crowder wouldn't even go and show up on the show. He was on what? Whoa. This is interesting. I don't know. This causation correlation. Gavin tried on this. so hard multiple times. He tried so hard that now Crowder is mad at Gavin for pushing so hard for it to happen. <laughs> I thought if anyone could make this happen, it was Gavin. But he could not convince him after multiple attempts to do it. We were fucking pissed. We think it's stupid for him not to do it and that it would go viral. I think with Crowder getting demonetized did not help things either. I'm not going to give up, but I figured for now it's not going anywhere. I would not be surprised in the near future if we get him to rethink it. We told him he is just as bad of the 19 out of 20 liberals Oof. that say no to Gavin when we ask them to be on. Oof. Hard to have a dialogue when no one wants to fucking talk to each other. So hard. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to have a fucking dialogue. With that said, we would still like to have Sam on with someone. Maybe if Steven sees that episode of Sam with some other conservative, then maybe he could open up the dialogue for a future date. We have Candace Owens on September 6th and blah, blah, blah. We could, on the conservative side, we could use some help getting here. Liberals, if you have any idea, the show is about having both sides and uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sorry it didn't happen. We're going to try and get Sam and Steven. I personally love Sam and watch his show every day. Um... It's a very thing, a sweet thing to say, Jim. Weird that you would need to put me up when you know that uh, the show is done every day from Brooklyn and this show uh, tapes in New York, but maybe it's true. I'm glad he does. Uh, no hard feelings, Jim. And some of you will say, that just happened once. But no, ladies and gentlemen, this was a pattern. This happened in the spring of 2019 but back in the summer early fall of 2018 there was an event that i was thinking about attending but it was contingent upon me being able to have a debate with someone who i thought was influencing the younger Generation on YouTube. I mean, that was basically my idea. And if it's someone who I think is, uh, you know, is, is doing that, I don't care how many. Well, the fact that he has, you know, with three or four million YouTube uh, views or subscribers is, is indicative of how many people he's reaching and why I think that's problematic. Um, you know, Roger Stone. I don't know how many YouTube subscribers he has. He's a fairly big name, but I don't think any, I don't think many, frankly, young people follow Roger Stone or care what he says. And so he's less relevant to me. So here is a recording that was made that captures a phone call that took place between myself and a booker recorded in New York. 
which is a one-party state. Um, you've altered the voices just slightly. And uh, no names are involved here. I mean, of, of the uh, other party. Um, I don't normally do this, to be honest with you, in terms of recording calls like this. But there was radio silence. I was supposed to debate Stephen Crowder. And I was very, very much looking forward to it. I was supposed to debate him at an event that took place in California. And this year it's taking place at a different place in the country. I think it's Tennessee. And um, and I was very excited about this. But then all of a sudden I didn't hear anything. And so when the person said, can we get on the phone? I was like, okay, but that's weird. Uh, and I'm in a one-party state. So, uh, because I had anticipated that something was going to go sideways. And here is that exchange. Things, things are moving along. I was literally just building your proposed schedule panel. Oh, great. I know. It's very exciting stuff. So you'll have all of that soon. I did want to talk to you about the debate. Okay. So um, it seems that Steven Crowder has maybe gotten some cold feet. Okay. And feeling a little intimidated. So I don't think he's coming. He's not even going to come? Right. Why is that? Pause it. Now, I want people to understand that this is just this lady's, in a, you know, assessment. She's not, she's not inside Stephen Crowder's head. The fact that he got cold feet because he felt a little intimidated, that's just her assessment. I want to be fair here. It's just her assessment. Go ahead. You know, it's a great question. I would love to ask it to him myself. Um, he's not even answering anymore. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, okay. That's too bad. Interesting. But I have two other options for you that I think might be interesting. Okay. And if they're not, we should go to the drawing board. Okay. We're, all, we're happy to do that. So we have um, Candace Owens coming from Turning Point USA. Um, are you familiar with her? Kanye Kanye's a big fan. Sure. <laughs> Um, and, um, the other one we have, which actually I think would be my preference. Um, I think it could be very interesting and I think it's a very interesting dynamic is, um, Dan Bongino. Who is Dan Bongino? <laughs> Dan Bongino, uh, you know, he, he alluded me at the, be the beginning because I didn't quite understand who he was. He is, ha he's had insane growth on YouTube and Facebook live and things of that nature. He was former Secret Service um, and now is just a big pro-Trumper. I'd love to send you some info and background on him and kind of what our idea is behind it. Okay. But if Candace, if neither option is favorable, I can absolutely go back to the drawing board. I have not a single problem doing that. I, will, I want to make sure this is a great experience, number one, for you and and something that's interesting and toothsome for you to get into also yeah um i mean i'm i'm familiar with candace owens and that might work I, it, but send me information about that other guy i just have never heard of yeah. him um and yeah that's a real shame i think you're Crowder. you're bigger yeah i I, I don't know what his team is doing around him. And that's, you know, just for me to speculate at this point. Um, Pause he, it. Want to make sure that we understand this is speculation. Um, I imagine it's informed speculation. Also, let me just say, I didn't mean any offense to Dan Bongino. I just hadn't had never heard of who he was. I didn't know who he was. And uh, so, well, you know. But let's uh, let's hear the speculation. It's speculation, folks. Just go back just a little bit, because as you can see, I was really interested in getting more information about Stephen Crowder. It work, I, the, it, but send me information about that other guy. I just have never heard of yeah. him. Um, and yeah, that's a real shame. I about think you're Crowder. you're bigger. Yeah, I I I don't know what his team is doing around him and that's you know just for me to speculate at this point um he i don't know he has don't a team he has a whole team doing. and he won't do it 
He can bring the team. I believe it's his father, but I can't oh. confirm or deny that. Okay. All right. Um, I'm not the expert. That was just my inference. Pause it. I want to make well, it clear. Uh, she says here, this is just her inference, so she doesn't know. She doesn't know. She doesn't know. I mean, it's just, it would be a weird thing to just sort of randomly say, I think it's his parent. His mom. His mom didn't want him to, or his dad didn't want just him to. Just out of nowhere to come up with that. Just out of nowhere to come up with that. But that's that's the inference. Um, and then, and we uh, pull it back just uh, 10, 15 seconds. Then, I mean, you have to put yourself in my mind. Like, this is the first I ever heard of that. And I'm like, wait a second. Crowder's not a teenager, right? Like, does his folks know he's doing this? Yeah, that's yeah, that's a real shame. I about think you're Crowder. you're bigger. Yeah, I I I don't know what his team is doing around him, and that's you know just for me to speculate at this point. Um, he I don't know. He has a team. He, he has a whole team, doing. and he won't do it. He can bring the team. I believe it's his father, but I can't no. confirm or deny that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm not sure. That was just my inference. I understand. Well, I mean, he's, mm-hmm. he's young, isn't he? Is he? He's not that young, is he? He's a young guy. He's he's in his twenties. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, send me that. What about uh, Dave Rubin? Is he? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> that, that's Dave Rubin. I went out to Dave Rubin to see if I get Rubin. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen Crowder is literally three eight-year-old boys in a trench coat. This phone call proves it. Well, that's why you got to have dad now. Now look, I understand. Oh, Stephen okay. Stephen is um, Stephen doesn't have the confidence necessarily to back up his uh, you know change my mind. But let me let me let me put it this way: uh, Stephen Crowder is not capable of defending his positions with an adult who has spent a little time reading up about these things and is somewhat knowledgeable about this stuff. Oh, he's 32 years old. Wow. All right. Well, uh, to be fair, maybe 31 at the time when this conversation happened, he was probably 31. And I know that, um, you know, my daddy made sure that I wasn't going to get into a situation where I would feel embarrassed, uh, well into my late thirties. So at one point, Steven Crowder has, uh, has got a man up and actually have a debate with people who are aware that they're going to have a debate that aren't going to, you know, in between psych classes or, uh, you know, and uh, run into a booth and then go sit down with him. Um, that's, you know, I'd be like me going to, I don't know, uh, you know, an elementary school and saying, like, who's going to play one-on-one basketball with me right now? Um, So, you know, just uh, did this because I know a lot of Crowder fans out there (laughs) feel... No, wait a second. I don't want to laugh about this because this is not easy for folks. There's a lot of people out there who think that Steven Crowder is some kind of champion of theirs. And the fact is, is that if he actually felt confident about what he espouses, um, he would be open to having a real exchange with people who know what they're talking about. Which is not to say that uh, college students don't, but like I say, you know, I mean, there's I've seen some kids who do quite well uh, with uh, with Crowder, but I mean. To be walking down the, um, you know, the the quad and just seeing a, a booth, you're not prepared for. It. You don't know who you're dealing with. You don't know what the topic is. And sometimes they do pretty well anyway. That's true. It's true. And and look, Crowder is uh, largely most of the things I've seen trying to argue the really in many respects the indefensible. And um, he does well with some of these students. Not so well with others. And we're only looking at the video that he wants to release, too. So, um, Well, if he wants someone more age-appropriate to debate him, um, the rest of the MR crew is available. Yeah, there you go. I'm going to so, have to check with my mom. <laughs> but, Stephen, you can come on this program. You can record it. 
you can, we'll do it live. I am willing to go on your program, do it live. We can do it in another venue if you want. Do it live! But um, you can hide behind the fact that you have more YouTube subscribers than I do, but it really sort of breaks down when you're willing to debate college students who don't even have YouTube channels. Welcome, everybody, to a very special episode of the H3 Podcast. Today is my first ever debate against the one and only Steven Crowder, who, it, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Crowder challenged me to a debate. He called me a layup. He said I was stupid. Well, Steven, I think the debate speaks for itself. Steven Crowder, for those of you that don't know, is probably one of the most hateful, bigoted people on the platform. Racist, homophobic, I mean, pretty much hits every box. Uh, we made this big, beautiful compilation of some of his greatest hits, but it's actually so heinous and offensive that YouTube uh, age-restricted the first upload of our video. So that all is available for our members, the whole, with the whole compilation and everything, which is, you know, adds a lot of atmosphere. Crowder challenge. Oh, and we've been given permission from Ethan to broadcast this. Thank you. Okay, because I saw people in chat complaining. I specifically asked. Okay, let's go. Me to a debate. He called me a layup. He said I was stupid. Well, Stephen, I think the debate speaks for itself. And before I show you guys the debate, I do want to give you a little bit of a background on Steven Crowder. For those of you who are not aware, Take he is away. one of the most hateful, bigoted people on YouTube by mm -hmm. far. Mm -hmm. uh, he is a racist, uh, homophobic, uh, transphobic douchebag, really. I'll say that. I'm wearing the gun holsters in his honor because he wears he, – he, he's a guy who wears gun holsters on his show to show how hyper-masculine he is. And so I felt I needed to uh, step up my masculine energy to match him. Um, I want to show you guys some of his greatest hits. You know, Steven is um, currently suspended from the monetization <laughs> program on YouTube because he's just done so much terrible, said and done such horrible and offensive things. Including yeah, the thing that makes Crowder really, really special, you know how people like Ben Shapiro will make the arguments racists and transphobes make, but he'll try to, like, present it in, like, an argumentative, I'm just presenting the facts and logic type way, you know? Crowder doesn't bother with any of that. When Crowder is racist, he just makes fun of black people. He just does a black voice and makes jokes about black people. Yeah, Steven Crowder, he's a very special man. You should... I've done plenty of stuff in him. You all should... It's No, he's a really... He's, he's a pretty bad guy. I don't think he... I, I, by the way, there are people who say, like, none of it's genuine, you know? Blair White has said that behind the scenes he's not transphobic at all, so he really just doesn't believe anything. He just, like, he, you can hand him money. But to answer the question of why I actually stopped going on his show was because... Just some things that Steven had said to me off-camera that kind of led me to believe that a lot of the things that he says about um, the LGBT stuff are not really how he feels, and that it's more of an act, and that it's more... Um, just what his audience wants and it's it's pandering a little bit and so i kind of felt like my position on his show made less and less sense because i don't act and when i go on it is for actual commentary including covid misinformation uh racist a racist reenactment of the george floyd murder this was the day he came back from from being s temporarily suspended as well and uh he had his friend neil on his back not even on his neck right look at this <laughs> for nine minutes or whatever it was. And uh, this obviously proves nothing. So he's a propagandist as well. He hits every, he hits all categories. He said recently that all gay icons have AIDS and that they shouldn't mm -hmm. be role models. We didn't even cover that, but yeah. Um, this was a pretty hot take considering the information he said was just factually wrong as well. But here we go. Honestly, You're right. You're honestly right, let's look at all major historical gay, fi you look at milk. Yeah. You look at, I mean, the one these you drink people, or the, the one no, you look yeah. at milk. You look at people. You you you, you look at Dallas. These this are me? people with AIDS. He named yeah. like one these are guy. People. Look, I think that if we these people have AIDS, why are we listening to milk? Wait, of course, didn't he, have. He, he named like what? Wait, yeah, did milk even have AIDS? Yeah, I don't even think milk. 
Yeah, I just, just, just said it, whatever. If, if, he, if he actually knew anything, he probably could have named some people, but, you know. As we pointed out. So, like, the whole prem, not that it matters, because people with AIDS are still human beings, but uh, his information was wrong, That's of true. course. Um, Asia, uh, Stephen Crowder, Asian no Cultural Pro Appropriation Month. He's so edgy, you This guys. week marks the second show in June, which is officially Louder with Crowders. There we go. Cultural Appropriation Month, where we take you across the globe to experience and appreciate all the great cultures this world has to offer. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the guy who flirts with being openly racist. Comedian. Um, he went viral recently for doing a racist... Oh, he was saying that there's no such thing as black farmers. This was a pretty hot take recently as well. You guys tell me if you think this is racist. The U.S. Department of Agriculture discriminated against black farmers, but little was done to address the problem. hundred years ago. <laughs> yeah, uh, most happy about the new policy, these people. So, yeah. I'm going to uh, buy a plow, man. I'm going to plant that corn. <laughs> Go get a John Deere. Barack Obama, mother. I'm the president of plowing that egg. You. Yeah. <laughs> I thought the last thing they would want to do was pretty embarrassing stuff, I got to say. So if you feel too bad for Steven, just remember what a piece of shit he is, because he gets absolutely demolished here. I'm not even going to lie. This to me is just not good for Steven. I'm just going to tell you straight up. I'm just showing you all this so you don't feel too bad for him. Um, he, of course, um, re he sold uh, famously a God Hates Figs shirt, right? Figs. When called out for it, he was too much of a coward to actually own what it says. But he sold this. He says he said it says socialism is for figs, which is why, of course, you have the limp wrist, which, of course, uh, makes total sense. You and and, 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 and by the way, by the way, what better thing to put on your child than a homophobic, psychotic T-shirt. I mean, yeah, start the brainwashing young, guys. That's how you become homophobic as an adult. There was this uh, reporter named Carlos Maza. This is like a who he was using homophobic slurs about for a long best time. Hits. This was a pretty good scoop. Before we get to the video uh, with our favorite, favorite <laughs> lispy sprite. Oh, look at the shirt he's wearing. Yeah. Oh, he's not homophobic. Socialism is for figs. And here he is talking about a gay reporter in a homophobic way. Your baby. From Vox. It's ridiculous. It's bonkers. You're being given a free pass as a crappy writer because you're gay. That's center line on his little queer. Graph yeah, this is there. like a Crowder <laughs> content <laughs> cop right here. Graph is queer. It's violence, filth. H3 has a big normie audience who has heard this. Yeah, I'm really glad that he's preempting with this because I think it's really, really important to remember that we don't argue with conservatives because we have like esoteric disagreements on like sideline social issues, but we're both working together in our own ways to make the world better. We fight against conservatism because they're fucking monsters. Because people like Crowder are just reprehensible, hateful people. There's not, like, even a pretense of justification for any of this. It's just, like, that's, it's really important to remember. This isn't, like, two groups with different ideas on how to improve the world. It really is just, there are people who want to make the world worse, and there are people who disagree on how to make it better. Sometimes it really is that simple. When I was a kid, I thought, you know, the world is that simple. And then when I was, like, 13, I thought, no, no, actually, everything is shades of gray. And now that I'm an adult, no, nah, actually, sometimes it really is that simple. There are people who will just make everything worse for, for money or just because they hate people. They just, they just hate, hate, hate people. Okay, so the little queer can eat his chips all nonchalantly. It's code for rape, Mr. <laughs> queer eating chips on the Vox channel. Mm -hmm, chip, 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 but you can eat just one. Like dicks. This is what Mr. Gay Vox wants to do. Mr. Lispy Queer from Vox. What, what, what were you holding, Gay? By the way, for someone who's like who always is like identity politics is ruining America, he really likes to categorize people by their identity. Anyway, this goes on for a minute thirty. You get the idea. It's it's hard to watch. The guy is absolutely off the deep end. Um, Most popular course, conservative on YouTube. YouTube really, uh, by the way, uh, locked down on him for was the COVID misinformation uh, stuff like this, which let me just say for the record is false. So please, YouTube, do not. This is not my belief. So do not ban me. Thank you. Uh, the wearing of masks has proven to lessen the spread of COVID. Really? Um, yes. Why don't really? you support has it? a mandate yes. for national mask wearing? And, and why don't you wear a mask more often? Uh, well, constitution much, you old crazy bitch? <laughs> why don't you just have a mandate to what? force people to wear a mask? Do you know why that's a problem? To force people to wear an yeah. item of clothing? Which, by the way, when you're talking about the... You have to wear pants in public, dipshit. It exists. You can't walk around dick out, bro. Try it.
He also went to dress as a trans woman to a gym to prove how uncomfortable it made everybody in a transphobic video. Darn. Tr it's always given me problems with them. That's the last time I drive a Chevy. I'll tell you that. Anyway, this week I changed my gender and went to Planet Fitness. So this week there was a big controversy at Planet Fitness when this man, er, uh, person, wanted to use the lady's restroom. One lady felt uncomfortable, complained. Look, he, he goes to Planet Fitness to, to own prove the lips, how uncomfortable he can make way. everyone. And honestly, he's just a big douche and nobody cares and everyone's super tolerant. So the only... Oh, and I'm sorry. Just, I'm going to take a dig also. Just, it has nothing to do with politics, but like, Steven Crowder works out. Does he work legs? Maybe that's why he fell over so easy when that union worker decked him and laid him flat because he was standing up on twigs. And nobody cares and everyone's super He would dominant. only work chest so and arms, by the way. the only actual reasonable explanation for this video is that he's fulfilling a, uh, a fantasy to cross-dress, of which he was very committed, by the way. So cheer props to him. Steven, with, through all of his hateful comment, obviously has been demonetized. He's been suspended, everything. And he's turned it into a whole kind of talking point for him and his uh, fan base to the point where he's filed a lawsuit against YouTube to generate more clicks, more cash. Oddly, there's no public record of this lawsuit, which leads me to believe that he's never actually filed it. <laughs> but uh, for the sake of this version, we had to cut all of that out. But um, he is, uh, let, let's just take my word for it in that case, a giant douche. Well, my my tiff with Stephen came when he said that our clip about COVID, when we were saying it's okay to listen to scientists, said it was his favorite clip of all time. We went back and forth for people who have been following, and Stephen boldly challenged me to a debate and a video titled "Your Move, Ethan." I will you invite you jerk. on the show, uh, Ethan Klein. I will have my you know what I'll follow you on Twitter. I will have. Darren, my booker, reach out where you can come on this show. Darren's his dad, by the way, right? Just say your dad, bro. He keeps trying to hide that it's his dad. You guys will get more info about the dad. But uh, Darren's his dad. We usually go after uh, political figures, science, authoritative sources yeah. right on this show. Usually those are the people who we have to debate. Change my mind is not a debate, but we've had politicians, scientists, Pulitzer winners, uh, and every now and then a layup crosses our, our, our path who, we, you know, we just, just kind of like the stick that you're only capable of. Now, in our original video about Crowder, we had noticed that he had reached out to me to book me on his show, and he was kind of butthurt that I ghosted him all this time. And in this video, he claims here that he never reached out to a, a booker and that, that I'm lying about it. So here's what he says about that. I'm going to assume that you didn't blatantly lie in some of the things that you said, that you're just really lazy or incapable of your due diligence. So you said some, we'll get to a female booker reached out to you for the show. Hey, Gerald, have I ever had a female booker? Uh, that's, that's a no. Never, that's a ever, negative. ever. Now you're either lying. We don't work with women on this show. So that's impossible. Or you're so lazy. Because I don't want to bully you and then you go and try and get us removed. You're Not so bully. lazy, you didn't even just verify the fact that it was complete. Well, I, you know what? I uh, actually, I took this to heart. So I said, you know what, Stephen? I am going to look into this. I found the email that was sent to me. It was very professional. Um, and it still had her social media contacts on it. And so I followed her down on Instagram. And I said, hey, blank, did you ever do booking for Louder with Crowder? I'm just trying to verify that this email I got from you invited me on the show is real or not. Thanks. Here's the email, by the way. Super professional. Definitely a real email, by the way. Uh, this one in particular. She immediately responded to me. She said, yes, I did booking for him years ago for a few months. I'm not quite sure whose contact you'd have now. I know his dad does his booking for him, though. Let me know if you need it to try his finest contact. Interesting that she knows that detail. That makes me think that is very real. And that he's lying about inviting me on his show. How odd. Well, yeah. And, and while we're talking about lying, Stephen, why don't you tell him that you never filed a lawsuit? Tell, tell us if you filed that lawsuit against YouTube, Stephen. Come on. Be honest with your viewers. And, you know, Steven says he doesn't want to bully me, but here he goes on to say this. And I am very and I am feeling very insecure now that Steven has taken a shot at me <coughs> Wait, the Kleenex. Let me just say, first Wait. of all, you have Hold on a second. Ah, ah. Get we were making fun of the fact that Steven had Kleenex on his 
table, which is pretty funny, let's be honest. He's sitting there with gun holsters and tissue. I mean, what is he crying every second? So listen to this. Get out of here. Ah. That's due to allergies, okay? Uh, so I had, I had a bronchial thing, which is community guidelines in immutable condition. Oh. It's genetic. Oh, poor Steven with his allergies. Don't put the tissue on your desk. It's funny. All right, don't get so twisted up. Look how twisted he gets about me laughing about him crying all the time. He needs a box of tissue on his desk. But I guess there's a ceasefire here so we can talk about any genetic conditions like sure. the lack of chin, lack of beard, 120-pound mm. man wearing the Cinderella bandana on his head. That one I didn't get. What's the 120-pound man? Cinderella? I, I don't... I couldn't really follow. If he's talking about me, I'm, 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 I am not 120 pounds. Trust me, dude. We don't Why have a... <laughs> right. Well, anyway. And to compensate with a beard that he uses just for men or the That's eyeball my phrase like E.T. in the cornfield? It's so stupid, bro. <laughs> the point is, I always think it's like hilarious when people deba actually go to the <laughs> debase themselves to making fun of my Tourette. You know, it's like, well, OK, dude. I really got you hard with the tissue thing, bro. Just don't yeah, put I mean, the tissue you, on. I can't hide my Tourette's. You fired the first volley by making fun of his allergies. So. Your allergies, dude. <laughs> I. Poor Which you Steven didn't Crowder actually has do. a disability. Yeah, yeah we didn't yeah. realize he, I, he had know, a disability like that. Yeah, I'm so sorry, bro. Ableist much? I had all that coming. Yeah. <laughs> I'm deeply offended, though, at the bullying uh, portrayed, and I take absolute cross with that. You know, and Dan had this one moment that actually went a little bit viral in the political community that Stephen notably ignored during our tit for tat. I'll play it for you here. And this is where that I'm leading to. to a lot of people, but just because I feel like there's a decent chance Stephen Crowder will see this and this will be the only time that I get to say this. Debate Sam Cedar, dude. Stop being such a pussy. <laughs> uh, I know that your dad doesn't want you to. Uh, and. You know, but that was a long time ago. That was three. You're you're three years older now. It's time. It's time to debate Sam. So <laughs> you, ah, and notably, he doesn't include this. He watches the whole clip, but not the debate Sam Cedar. Weird, he didn't cover that part. He now, went into a lot of detail on everything else. Oh yeah. Oh, exhaustive detail. Huh. Now, who is Sam Cedar? Sam Cedar is the host of a political left-leaning show called The Majority Report. Has a million subs. He's a big channel. Crowder famously backed out of a scheduled debate with Sam at Politicon, earning him the name Cold Feet Crowder at the behest of his dad. Sam secretly recorded the phone call with the organizer of the event who exposed Crowder. Here's the call. Yeah, that's a real shame. I think you're, you're bigger. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what his team is doing around him. And that's, you know, just for me to speculate at this point, um, he... I don't know. He has a team? He, he has a whole team doing. and he won't do it? He can bring the team. I believe it's his father, but I can't no. confirm or deny that. By the way, everyone seems to be confirming that it's his dad doing all this shit behind the scenes somehow. So people speculate that actually he actually backed out of the debate because Sam is actually, you know, an informed, good debater. And they were afraid that, you know, Crowder would look like an idiot. And so he backed out at the last minute at the behest of his father. The thing is, he's happy to challenge me, somebody that has no political, not very little. I don't spend my day t talking and thinking about politics, nor am I a debater, nor am I, let's be honest, intelligent. Sophie, right? Let's be honest. So with all that being said... We figured let's get someone who is familiar with the topics, who does spend their time thinking about politics, and who is, you know, unlike me, smart. So we've got a little surprise for Steven Crowder. So let's all enjoy the debate. I'm really glad to have uh, my next guest on the show. And I've always said this, I always respect people who um, enter, the, enter into the arena. Um, and, you know, we've had a lot of debates on this show, which is different from like a change of my mind where we sit down and have conversations. But uh, my old Brazilian jiu-jitsu coach always said, if you come a switch, we go switch. You go spicy, we're going to do a little spicy. So we're always trying to keep it as respectful as possible. And I really do appreciate the guy making the time because a lot of people haven't, has a huge YouTube channel, several YouTube channels, one of the OGs. Mm. A lot of people watch him. Uh, you know him. Some of you like him. Some of you don't. Same can be said for me. Ethan Klein from H3H3. Uh, Ethan, thank, thanks, man, for making the time. You're very welcome. And I just want to say, I know you called me. You said that I would be a layup. 
<laughs> I, I think fine, I use something like that. And yeah, I think yeah, you're yeah. right because I don't think I'm a very good debater. I think you know that. So uh, I don't want to make it too easy for you. Oh, okay. So uh, I've prepared. Okay. Yes. All right. So, so Dan, what we were going to talk ready. about is uh, what we were going to talk about is you know the initial quote that happened. I think he's looking off there. Uh, the initial quote that kind of was turned into um, a little bit uh, of a meme, which wasn't intentional, and uh, was you saying you don't even have to think about it regarding the CDC. Hmm. Uh, and I disagree with that. Um, I think people should think about it. I believe. And we set, talked about this through playful ribbing in an aggregation of medical authorities and scientific voices to make an informed and rational decision. Um, so where do you think that I was that I'm wrong on that? Stephen, do you know that um, the Spartans are that they are like uh, practice man love with children? Oh, geez. OK, so this is what's going to happen. I what did I tell you? He was going to do anything he could to avoid. Oh, oh, there he is. Oh no, Sam Cedar! What a whoa! Hello. What a fucking nightmare! You, I had no idea this was going to happen. I thought I thought Ethan was a stand-up guy. This is oh, where we are. Well, yeah, I told Dave. Dave, remember I told you? I told you. I said this is. I guarantee you, he's going to do anything he can to avoid the debate. Well, I just think he believes that he should debate you. No, no, he doesn't. He just takes advantage of of women with you know mental health Steven, issues. Ethan Klein know, doesn't I, stand up and do, funny, to his own fighting. I it's just hilarious. Let's bring on FM. You would uh, do anything to avoid talking to me. I think you're the point that you made. Yes, that's Joe Rogan. Yeah, Joe Rogan and, and, Rogan and, and Ben Shapiro and, and, and Dave ben Rubin Shapiro. and Jordan Peterson and Noam Chomsky and Sam Harris. Everyone's been avoiding. And not just attempting Sam's to get Peter. your audience by jumping in. <laughs> well, I, I debated <laughs> with uh, Charlie <laughs> Kirk. <laughs> Stephen, I mean. It's okay. about issues. Let's it's about talk issues. about those yeah. issues. That's what you're doing here. Valid yeah. points. You're so clever. I, I had no idea that you were taking your show off early last time, coming in today with your pig pen peanuts. I wish every. <laughs> You take those off of the velveteen they really buttons. We must have been Black very eyes, worried about this, like Stephen. It. I don't know why. No it one's would be worried about oh, come it. On, so I didn't want to well, do let's, it. Let's have Sam, a debate. Come on, no just, worried, I'll tell you what. I have a general. This. I have a general. This is a rule. great opportunity. I don't start a debate to, based with people on a lie. And how about you get sabotaging? To a, how about you get Stephen? Show yourself, you coward. Stephen, show yourself. Don't show your co-host. Ethan, you should show yourself. Ethan, how can you respect yourself as a man, brother? Stephen, so Stephen, you are such a Howard, yeah, stop showing your little leprechaun co host well, who comes right, out dressed right. hey, like Ethan, your sidekick. Ethan, Ethan, why do you have to bring I show on a guy who's the 30th I'm of the really viewers? the saddest thing I've ever heard. So you Just have a guy with Steven. less viewers to come on to debate him because you can't? <laughs> Well, obviously, if I'm a, apparently if, obviously I'm a, if I'm a layup yeah, and not a debater. Well, look, yeah, you're the I one mean, who you're called. One you're the one who got debate. Debate. Stephen, started the one that got angry about Show it. Stephen, Stephen. Stephen. Don't, don't be such a, a coward. Right, hold on. So let me let me right, let me hear what it. let me hear what Pig Ken has to say here really quick. Fair enough. Show But Ethan, Ethan, look, I don't. Hold on a second, Ethan. This is because initially I came on here to talk with Ethan. Ethan, come on, man. Look, the same reason that I haven't ever had a conversation with Sam Cedar is the same reason that uh, Joe Rogan, uh, Sam Harris, Brett Weinstein, Dave Rubin, Ben Shapiro don't own anything. It's based on a lie, Ethan. Just what's like you lie? claiming my Ethan, what's the lie? You claiming my what's booker lie, reached Stephen? out to you, Ethan, when you Stephen, know that's not the true. There's no what's one the ducking lie? you, Why Sam. Are you I've so never afraid. Sam, Yo, Sam, listen, Sam, I Sam, think Sam, you're Sam. A smart guy. I can call out Mike I don't Tyson. Understand why it doesn't mean that I'm ducking him. You are so worried about this. Why do you I feel that? Why don't. do you feel that anyone, Sam? Why do you feel that anyone owes you airtime when you have a fortieth of the audience and you've been doing the show? I don't think anybody owes me airtime. I think I think that Ethan has just given it to me. I didn't right. ask him for it. And right. so no, you've been begging the real for it for a long time is, with everyone Stephen, bigger than why yourself. Are you so yeah, he found you about can't build an audience. And so what why happens is he uploads so 15 about, times more, do you think has your less than a 50th says, of the audience. Well, that's why he wants to debate you is so he can build his Sam, do you Sam, think come on, your audience yeah, cares yeah. that I only have a million subscribers and you have what, six or seven million I think, subscribers? Let me answer. Can I answer your question? Can I answer your question? Can I answer your question? Sure. You want me to answer your question? My audience would say Sam who? Just like Joe Rogan's audience and Ben well, Shapiro's and Dave Rubin. Now they all Rubin. know who I am. Now they you all know who you are because you had to show on yourself into another coward show. College, college another students, show. every day that you do that, uh, change we, my hold mind. Hold on a second, hold on a second. They don't know who those college students are. This is another lie. Are. This is another lie. Let me, let me be. clarify, Sam. Let me clarify, Sam. The change my mind, everyone knows on the show, right? We've had professors on the- How did you know I ended my show early last week, Stephen? If your audience doesn't even know me, how 
How and did half you know of your that? staff doesn't Do you watch like my you show? because I'm a diehard fan. Yes, it's because I he's a diehard well, fan. If you're yeah, a I've die heard hard of you, fan, but I just why, met you. Why not? Congratulations, have me Sam Cedars fan. And Stephen, have a, a conversation. Huge fan. I, I like, will talk right about every time I try and talk, you're interrupting, talk about, Sam. Steve. Yeah, right now, you're I'm trying anything. to talk with you. You're interrupting, you Sam. You bombarded the show. Okay, you, bombarded, you bombarded my show under a false pretense. You claimed bombarded. that ever, just like you claimed that I ducked a debate with you under a false pretense. Have I uh, ever? That is what the Politicon people told me. Oh, is that what the they told you? Well, so you're just lazy yeah. with your research? And if no, big did, tech what, is, you continue with the I lie. Need? You need to research to say, did Stephen ever accept? They, they said you were let me booked. Let me explain to you. Let me explain they to you. Let me explain to you. Hey, and whoa, then you whoa, whoa, dropped Sam, out and you literally. Sam, 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 sweetheart. Spirit. Sam, fake stand up comic who we can't find any footage about online. Let I'm me finish. I'm not a stand up comic. Oh, you're not. Okay, that makes sense because everything that I've seen is incredibly unfunny and unentertaining, well, which may I'm explain the audience. Irony, irony alert, Stephen. Comedian. How much have you Comedian. watched of my stuff, the Stephen? That you Sam, think that your audience can I answer your question? Appreciate our, Sam, our, our discussing Sam, things. Sam, Sam, Samuel, can I answer your question? Yes. So you have gone on. You've done the same thing with other other comments. Everyone has a bigger audience than you because you said I want to speak with Stephen Crowder. You believe that at some point there was some acceptance. When have I ever done a, a, a Politicon? Ever. I when don't I, know. As a matter of fact, I in the last decade, like in the last decade, in the last decade, I haven't done a single political conference. How I hosted CPAC say, for four years and stopped because they suck. How they don't say, pay okay. and they're full of losers. What about and you've been McGinnis's clamoring show. for it. Gavin and it's a lie. told me that you dropped out of doing how his show because you, this is just hearsay and gossip. I've never met more of a woman. When he wants to keep debating. I don't know. Let's talk about the issue. Let's talk about the issue. So, Ethan, do you want to have a conversation, Ethan, about the vaccine? Because Ethan, you want to have a conversation going to hide. You Absolutely, so I do. About. So why are you hiding behind San Cedar? San oh, no, Cedar. no, no, no me and Sam are lined. I'm not hiding. Him. He just well, you're just no, a liar. So you're a liar. Because remember, we said, hold on a second, hold on a second. I mean, it yeah. sort of yeah, yeah. feels like it's you ridiculous. guys are the ones who are hiding. Really? Hiding? Really? No, 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 this is actually, who's snuck in on you? Who's the guy who never appears on stage, never does a live show, but never even sheds, never even allows a shadow of comedy to be perceived on his program? It's just hiding. Everything we do is out in the open. H3. H3. Steven, you know you're wearing a holster. We agreed. So what? Hold on a second. Yeah? So? Yeah. I want to normalize uh, responsible gun ownership. Is that your debate? No wonder you had to bring in a hack for you. you. Well, no, you're talking about right comedy. Well, that's yeah. a strategy. That's right. not very you funny. You have a holster, bro. Also, you have a holster. Also, you're you have a holster. Totally and he takes you, advantage you, you, of you, mentally you, ill you, women you, for a show. You made spoilers about women. gay <laughs> love. All right, okay. All of it. All right, Sam. You, you, you got it. You got it. I hope you have no, a wonderful highlight reel. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Let me just make one point. Hope you enjoy Politicon. Hold on, let me make one point, Steven. Take it easy. Steven, right, don't, don't bail. I appreciate it. Don't bail, you coward. Hey, Sam, one thing before I go. One thing before I go. Can you take off your glasses? Steven? Hold on. One thing before I go. Can you take off your glasses? We just want to see if I just want to see if you take them off, if you have the, if you have the Velveteen Rabbit buttons. That's the oh, only thing I'm curious see. about. It's the I, only interesting part Steven, about it. Or if there's a soul. I, let's take debate. Off the, take off the glasses. Let's debate, uh, Steven. Don't hide behind the glasses. Don't, 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 don't say let's debate, Ethan. You've lost the debate. Debate the issues. What does it matter who you debate, coward? All right, good. You guys are good. Thank you. Coward. You won't even take off the glasses. I was right. All right, yeah. You can run away. You run away twice. Cold feet again. Come on, Steven. Wow. Wow, dude, I can't believe he admit to following. He admitted that he followed the show last week. We got him. He admitted that he watched the show last we week. We got we him. Dude, we played him so hard because oh. he, he literally was following. He saw that you went live, dude. We fucking got him. Oh, my God. We fucking nailed him. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> So do you want to respond to here? You want to throw him up, Dan? Yeah. Do you want to respond to anything he said now that he's not talking over you? Um, well, I, I mean, look, uh, he's obviously lying about the idea that he wouldn't want to do uh, do a debate with me because his audience wouldn't know. Here's a guy who literally tracked my show last week because he was afraid that this would happen. He is a, here's a guy who right. uh, claims to have watched. I don't know. I, I don't know what it is he said he watched, but. He's not worried about audience not knowing who he's debating because he sits down with random college kids and sandbags them on uh, their campus. He, 
I have the recording from Politicon when they called and he backed out. I have emails from Gavin McGinnis, whose show I would have never gone on except he offered up a debate with Crowder and Crowder left. And so, you know, I think Stephen is afraid of debating somebody. You know, look, I do a political show every day. It's yeah, dry, I don't. it's boring, it's, it's obvious. and you don't. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and so afraid. if he wants to debate the issues, what's the difference between me and anybody in the world? I, I mean, only that he is convinced that, uh, for whatever reason, he's nervous about debating me. I don't know why. I don't know why that's the case. But I debated uh, Charlie Kirk at Politicon. It was fine. I thought Kirk did a fairly good job. I think Stephen's not... Uh, a total idiot, but I also do think he's a bit of a liar. I mean, yeah, we even went through the effort of tracking down this claim that he never booked us for the show. I mean, here's the email, super professional. So I was like, I definitely, I reached out to the girl. She said, um, I said, did you send me this email? She said, yes, I did. Years ago, for a few months, I worked for Steven Crowder booking. I'm not quite sure who you'd contact now. I know his dad <laughs> does the booking for him. Let me know if you need me to try to find you. How would she know that if she didn't work for them? You know, what's funny is that when the Politicon, um, when the, the woman from Politicon called me, she also mentioned that his dad, uh, he, she said his team, I think Stephen got cold feet. His team pulled him out. And I said, wait, he's got a team? Hmm. And he said, well, his dad. Right. right and, right. you know, I mean, I, I, I called my dad to see if he could call Steven's dad, to see if Steven would uh, debate me, like on some type of play oh. date. But my father said, reminded me that I was a grown man and I should probably handle it myself. Oh, you know, that's funny. My dad is actually Zooming with his dad later today <laughs> to debate these very topics. You know what else he lied about? Uh, filing this lawsuit. He, there's no lawsuit he ever filed, at least that I can find in the public record, which lawsuits are public record. Uh, so he, ha he is a liar, as far you know, uh, the evidence does, does suggest. Yeah, and the thing is, is that, you know, they go on and on about getting demonetized from YouTube or whatever it is, and uh, they never, it, for them, it's really just a, a way of generating clicks. There are Oh, yes, uh, the same with policies. the lawsuit. Yeah, I mean, there are policies that you could pursue, but he can't ever address those because his ideology is such that there's no way uh, in, uh, for, for him to address it as a policy matter. Uh, so, because as a policy matter, he'd have to agree that there needs to be government regulation of these things, and he doesn't believe in government regulation. And so, uh, he just goes out there and makes it as if it's like uh, conservatives are somehow being oppressed, as well, opposed that's not, to... it's actually not true at all. Everybody who talks about these issues, if they're taking a conservative or liberal stance on them, are, they're all getting demonetized equally. The fact that... Oh, yeah! The fact that Stephen wants to go out there and do a mock execution of George Floyd and then act bewildered when his channel gets uh when his videos get demonetized is qu it's quite surprising to me that he would even be feigned surprised at that yeah we get i don't know i don't, I don't know how what our percentage of demonetization <laughs> is for our videos it happens we just don't whine about it like right. they do and use it to generate clicks the it's because we're willing to talk about topics that we know i mean we don't do sh sh shit like what uh, crowder does that that are just out and out racist and <laughs> and uh, homophobic but we will we will talk about protests we will talk about um you know political situations that advertisers don't want to be a part of absolutely and that's just part of doing the job responsibly is understanding you're not gonna be able to suck a dollar out of every single uh, bit of content <laughs> yeah, well. if you're actually you know trying to uh you know make a, a point about issues and uh, one other thing he keeps bringing up apparently the reason he's ducked you sam is because you only have one million subscribers uh, I know it. and I I've actually challenged somebody to go through all of the interviews he's done and find any with under a million because that would be quite ironic yeah I find it hard to believe that Steven has that metric particularly since half of his you know all of his change my minds are with college students who may not even have a YouTube channel right you have more <laughs> subs than them surely I, at least a yeah, couple I more mean, than I'm, that yeah well hmm I feel we got him pretty good here, Sam. Well, you know, I would have liked to had an exchange of ideas with Steven, so Me I'm a too. little bit disappointed. And I know how much you were looking forward to that too. Uh, you know, we had, uh, but I guess Steven is just more interested in personalities than he is uh, actually debating issues. Yeah. It's sort of sad.
It is sad. Sort of sad. It is sad died. because he claims he's a political thinker, but he doesn't think he didn't think much in this case. Uh, I gotta wonder if there are members of his audience right now who are probably thinking like, "Hey, wait a second. Maybe Stephen is actually afraid of having some type of exchange." I mean, he spent. How many times did he say in the preface of, of going on air with you, you know, a lot of times people won't show up for debates with me. And Here we well, are, baby. He only wants to debate, um, you know, people who have a perspective on the left that have a, a YouTube channel that's over a million. Well, maybe you've got to expand your horizons oh, may, a little Maybe bit. you should be looking to debate people who are actually proficient in debating and the topics itself. Instead of, he referred to me as a layup, and I would agree with him in that I'm not politically savvy, and I'm not a debater. So what, so what, what actual... Uh, value is there in debating me for him other than for him to look smart and get an easy point exactly but but let me say this that the original points that you were making about when it came to like the masks um i uh i've interviewed i don't know uh half a dozen different epidemiologists maybe a little bit more over the past year uh on the show uh some of the top epidemiologists in the country and the fact of the matter is, is that there was uh, confusion and really not uh, the science was not settled on the way that COVID was, was transferred. They, they didn't realize that it could be yeah. aerosolized. But the bottom line is, is that wearing masks, once they understood this, where the downside to wearing masks is nil. zero. Well, yeah, and, according to Stephen, scientists are not ever allowed to change their mind. See, uh, scientists need to be right the first time and only the first time. They're not allowed to change their stance with data and research. And if they do, then they're frauds forever for everything. Right. I mean, I even saw Stephen talking about, oh, uh, Fauci was wrong about AIDS back in, you know, the, what was it, the, uh, the early 80s. And that's proof. Right. He is, he, Fauci was wrong sometime previously in his career. Uh, so therefore, he is a fraud forever. Did you find it interesting, too, how he wouldn't put the camera on him for a minute? It was just on his sidekick? Yeah, what do you think was going on? Do you think he was, like, like going, like, dad, dad, yeah, get yeah, dad yeah, in yeah, here. Yeah, 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 Get dad in here. <laughs> yeah. Get dad, dad in here now. Got it, got it, got it. <laughs> but I'm glad he finally brought it back, because I was like, what is with the sidekick? Why are you throwing him under the bus? <laughs> I know it. And the sidekick had to pretend like he was a big fan of mine. And he had that's to come in real quick. Yeah. Monitoring the show. That is. His wow. sidekick wasn't even drunk yet. It is early. Usually that guy's pissed drunk by uh, <laughs> the time they do their show. Is I, you know, to be honest, like I have the only time I think I've watched a uh, an extended run of Crowder show was when he was talking about you. I was trying to figure out, like, how, how did this start? And. He was really drippily condescending for a guy who is afraid oh, to yeah. actually test his 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 beliefs. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm surprised. I haven't seen him so weak since watching him get punched in the face and dropping like a deck like a house of cards By an old in man, uh, Wisconsin. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's the other thing. I don't know if you knew this. So Crowder, when he was complaining about what happened on YouTube to him. You know, like he put out a compilation video of people responding to when he got decked by a union guy in Wisconsin at the uh, 2011 uh, March protests against Scott Walker. And in that compilation, I was in it and he put the video out. And then he pulled it back and cut me out of the compilation and reposted it on Twitter. <laughs> Do we have that stuff? Oh wow, he you are, he that? is deathly afraid of you. It is uh, uh, we somebody on Twitter saw it and sent it in. We did a video about it, but he, it is it is weird. He is deathly afraid. And how he pretends? That's the thing I don't get. Like, how do you spend so much time worrying about somebody that you think is not big enough to even like well, who discuss? Is he, who is he supposed to debate then? If not I, you. I don't know. Yeah, me? I'm not a political debater. I'm just some dumbass. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, maybe he's trolling through to find, like, you know, like uh, <laughs> makeup uh, tutorial uh, right, sites right. that have, like, two million Bloggers, uh, subscribers. Yeah. Or, I mean, uh, anybody who doesn't Minecrafters know. Minecrafters have a lot of subs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 
There's some Minecrafters my son watches that um, that uh, that 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 maybe he'd like to debate on, on some of these <laughs> right, issues. Right. right. <clears throat> wow. All right. Well, we got him, dude. Yeah, that was fun. I appreciate your your attempting to to I, further the discourse, Ethan. I, I mean, think, that's the and thing. And that's all I care about. At the end yeah, of the day, I, I just wanted to put forward the best conversation possible to inform the most people possible. But Stephen today yep. wasn't able to do that for us. I know. It's so sad. It's a disappointment. Uh, you, you gave him the opportunity. And, and I hope his dad does have a stern talking to, like, son, this is the way to behave. This, is the, this was not the proper way to behave in this situation. And gives him a I good mean, fatherly talk. There's been times where I've said to my son, we're going to call up blankety blanks dad or mom, and you're going you're gonna to get on the phone and you're going to apologize. And right, so right, I just right. want to say, I am sure, I don't want to speak for you, but we'll be very gracious when Stephen's dad calls and puts oh, Stephen yeah. on the phone. When someone apologizes, you, 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 you accept that. Yeah, you know, I, I, I want to make that absolutely clear yeah. that yeah. if um, if Stephen calls to apologize, I'm going to be gracious about it. Yeah, and that's funny that you just reminded me. He kept telling me, um, he kept telling me, I respect anyone that enters the ring, and I'll make my fans known of that. I'm, it's very, I, I respect that you're willing to enter the ring with me, mm. and uh, apparently he doesn't respect that about you. No, I guess not. You don't no, have enough subscribers. Be- I don't have enough subscribers to earn the respect to enter the ring. When yeah. you enter the ring, a million you is must a lot, do so. Apparent, I'd, I'd like to know where, at what point you are capable of entering the ring. Uh, and we'll, I'll uh, try what's to the get, subscriber yeah, threshold? Where, what is because the, the, first exactly. time, the first time he made this argument, I only had, I think, 500,000 subscribers. And sure. then, uh, and then it, 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 I feel like it's, there's a, the goalposts are like he's dragging them. With him as he runs along uh, down the field, and they're just getting further and further. Yeah, I mean, I'll try to get more intel on that for you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And you know, maybe uh, folks can you know uh, you know reach out to him on Twitter and ask him politely. You know, uh, you know, how far are the goalposts? Where's what? what, Yeah, let's let's find out so that we can have something to work towards. Right. So if you can ask Stephen, what? How many subs does Sam need to be worthy of? uh, the big stage. Because I'll, I'll stick at it just to hit that number. Um, and well, we can buy you subs or, you know, we can work something <laughs> that's out. That's true. Yeah. We can just buy the subs. Yeah. That really occurred to me, but yes, we'll I should have done that. I should have done that today. I should have yeah. bought a, a, oh, really? a million well, hold subs. Hold on, Stephen. Uh, give me a minute. Uh, my next guest on the show, and I've always said this, I always respect people who um, Let's enter, go! enter into the arena. Um, I think people should think about it, I believe. Look at his and demeanor said, change, dude. Even before anything happens, listen to how much his voice changes. Talked about this through playful ribbing and an aggregation of medical authorities and scientific voices. So this is what's going to happen. I to- what did I tell you? He was going to do anything he could to avoid. Oh, oh, there he is. Oh, no, Sam Cedar. What a, whoa, no. what a fucking nightmare. You, <laughs> I had no idea this was going to happen. I thought, I thought Ethan was a stand up guy. Do oh, let's, it. Let's have Sam- it. I love it. God, in Steven Crowder, I'm seeing every person I debate who realizes they've lost and start like hardcore molding. Like before anything even happens. I've, I've already seen it, yeah. And by the way, he admitted that he was watching Sam Cedar's channel. He just said, you went off your stream early that day. He admits they were screening Sam Cedar's channel just to make sure that this exact thing didn't happen. But with the pre-recording, Sam was able to come in during. He was, he, all the preparation in the world, they were looking for Trojan hippos, but they couldn't keep their eye out for the horse. Is this the new one? Oh, it is. Oh my God. It has one view, dude. We're f***ing in. All right, who's ready for this, dude? I'm, I'm like a, I'm like a kid. Like I'm giddy. I to- what did I tell you? He was going to do anything he could to avoid. Oh, oh, there he is. Oh no, Sam Cedar. What a, whoa, no. what a fucking nightmare. Thank you, I had no idea this was going to happen. Oh, I thought, I thought Ethan was a stand-up guy. Wait, wait, dude, 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 dude. Oh, we gotta run that again, we gotta run that again. Oh my God, he's literally like worried. That's why he's scared, because he did this already. If you saw earlier when I talked to Ethan, like he was watching to make sure that Sam Cedar was not going to come in because they suspected that Sam Cedar was going to come into this debate. That's why he's trembling. Look at this. I believe. That's a that's a Sigma male right there. The Sigma male Sam Cedar, dude. Absolutely 
frame annihilated, okay? Steven Crowder has no frame. He's he's off the frame because he has no frame now. So Ethan Klein, one of the hosts over at H3, agrees to a debate with Crowder, right? Because they clearly disagree with each other. And he's like, sure, I'll get into this debate. But Klein isn't a political person. He doesn't he doesn't do this, right? He's not spending his entire day like researching political news stories and issues and all that. Um, but he knew about this whole Crowder versus Sam Cedar thing. He knew about Crowder running away. And so they set things up for this debate. Klein agrees to debate Crowder. And then this happens. <laughs> Drops. <laughs> okay, okay. I got to give you one piece of context and then Jank. Ah, I love the story. Okay. If you caught Crowder say to Sam Cedar, you ended your show early, what he's referring to is how he's been constantly keeping tabs on Sam Cedar because he was afraid that this was going to happen. Oh, my God. He's so. Ah, it's so good. It's so good. It's so no. good. Oh, those big guns ain't going to protect you from Sam Cedar, are they? He admits that he was tracking Sam's activity the week before to make sure that he was live so there would be no possibility that Ethan can do a little bit of a switcheroo and bring on Sam Cedar. And even like before he spoke to uh, Sam Cedar, you can hear in his voice, he was actually trembling. Like you could see how nervous he was. And it doesn't really make sense to me. I mean, you are a debate bro. You challenge everyone to debates. It's your shtick. You're the change my mind guy. So the fact that you won't even engage with somebody else, Especially when they're on your level, you think that you'd want to really test your skills, right? And debate Sam Cedar, but he didn't want to do that. And he proceeded to have a meltdown down. And then um, he just straight up, he left. Then you have the situation with Ethan Klein and conservative YouTuber Steven Crowder. Yesterday, after all this uh, online back and forth that they've had, Ethan and Steven were set to have a political debate, but uh, Ethan ended up doing kind of a debate and switch. Bring on Sam Cedar, a left-leaning political commentator and host of the Majority Report to debate Steven Crowder just moments after the debate started. What was really interesting is you kind of have both sides claiming a win here. Today's topic, Steven Crowder went up against H3H3 for a debate and everything devolved. Uh, essentially, what was supposed to happen was that Steven Crowder was supposed to have a debate with Ethan via some kind of Zoom app. And what ended up happening is that uh, Ethan switched out his screen and allowed Sam Cedar, who's a political leftist commentary channel on YouTube, to debate Crowder instead. Now, the whole thing devolves from there because Crowder doesn't want to debate Sam Cedar. He wants to debate Ethan Klein from H3H3. And a bunch of stuff gets said. And People were asking my thoughts on the whole thing, and so I went to go watch, and I couldn't stop chat laughing. And I'll be honest with you, I think they both look stupid. And this is what Crowder said to him. The first thing he said, he said, the reason I want to debate you is because you have less than one third of the subs I have. What? That's the reason you want to debate someone? Because they have less subs? And I was like, what? Okay, well, you prove. Oh, wow, you did not say that. Wow. I'm like, bro, your, your, your call to fame is a, is a series called Change My Mind where you go on college campuses with your binder full of facts, okay? And then you just railroad people, strangers with zero following because it's good for you. And here you have somebody who's, you know, knows their stuff, who follows the lingo, who, follow, who has a, you know, I think he has like a million subs, the same seater, you know, majority report, and you won't do it. Steven Crowder. And I'm just like, what? Steve Why would you go out of your way to debate people who clearly don't know the subject matter, but then you have somebody who does, and you're like, I refuse to do it ever. Steven, this is Jesse. I hear from Sam that you won't debate him, that you have cold feet, and that you are beta male, beta, if it's true, beta male. And by the way, Sam said he is an alpha male. Alpha male, not a beta male. And that you are afraid to debate him, Steven. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. And that your father should have stopped allowing you to be beta. Debate Sam, Steven, don't be afraid. Don't be a beta male. Let me know how it goes. And so supposedly, um, Steven Crowder was going to debate Ethan Klein on their show because Sam Cedar wasn't streaming that day, I guess. Steven Crowder said that his wife was sick and he didn't want to come on um, because he was worried that Cedar would show up on this show. 
And so apparently right now, what they were checking was to make sure that Sam Cedar was live so that Sam Cedar couldn't show up because he's doing his show. So Sam Cedar and Co. like pre-recorded an episode and then they aired it to pretend it was live. So Steven Crowder just went to check and make sure that the majority report was live with Sam Cedar so that he couldn't show up on the show. So now that he sees he's live, now he's coming back to this. And he's like, okay, cool. I see that Sam Cedar's live. There's no way he can ambush me on this podcast. So now we're good to go. We started the show early. We ended at 12.30 p.m., which was 30 minutes before uh, the debate that... 11 Crowder, to 12.30, yeah, that, if you that, guys remember. That, that, that Crowder had planned with uh, Ethan Klein on H3. And so we connect with H3 through Zoom. And uh, like immediately after we're done with the show... And then four or five minutes later, uh, they go, oh, we just got an email from Crowder's dad that um, Stephen had an emergency with his uh, wife who's pregnant. And this is actually sort of disturbing. We were concerned. We were were concerned. And um, and I'm being serious about that, actually. Um, And he can't do it. However... We will reschedule for next Monday at noon. But it was weird that, hey, we have an emergency. I mean, this is the father, this is the grandfather of those kids. If I was that guy, I would be like, look, we have an emergency, can't get back to you. I wouldn't give the details, because why would I? And I'd be like, it's an emergency, and I'll get back to you later in the week to reschedule. But no, they rescheduled it for 12 p.m. on Monday, Eastern, which is exactly when we go live. That's so weird. That is, you know, the initial quote that happened. I think he's looking off there. Uh, the initial quote that kind of was turned into um, a little bit uh, of a meme, which wasn't intentional, and uh, was you saying you don't even have to think about it regarding the CDC. Hmm. Uh, and I disagree with that. Sometimes it's good not to have debate. When your opponents are not playing fair, when your opponents are not playing in good faith, then very often it's wise to avoid debate. My friend Steven Crowder learned this yesterday. I I don't know either of the non-Steven Crowder in, involved in this incident. There it was Steven Crowder and then some lib that he was going to debate, and then some other lib jumped in, and he was secretly going to debate him instead or something. It was, it was all this kind of inner YouTube drama that I really don't know anything about. Crowder agrees to debate this one guy that I've never heard of. But then, at the last second, some other guy that I'm not familiar with, who actually, one of the reasons this was called to my attention is because people were saying that this other guy, Sam Sater, looks like the Kroger store version of me. He's got, I don't know, he's got similar skin and kind of glasses or whatever. So uh, then he jumps in at the last minute and then they, they just start insulting one another. And Crowder says, okay, I'm, I'm not doing this. This is, this is not what I signed up for. Crowder was right <laughs> not to debate these guys. Frankly, the only mistake that Crowder made was agreeing to debate this jerk in the first place. These guys, I, again, I, I don't want to speak out of turn because I really don't know who these people are other than Steven Crowder, but they don't seem like very serious people. It doesn't seem like anything productive would come out of just talking to either of these guys. So don't do it. Here's a very important political lesson for you. Never wrestle a pig. You will both get dirty, but the pig will like it. (laughs) This is what I'm finding. I love debating people on the left. I like debating people on the right. I especially love debating squishes in the center because I want to pry them over to my side. But you have to have a purpose to the debate, okay? We, I think, on the right have have really gotten high on this idea of the free marketplace of ideas and you challenge bad ideas with good ideas. Yes, that's all well and good, but you need to make sure you're actually engaging with ideas. You need to make sure that, that you and the other, the debate opponent, agree on the purpose of the debate. But I guess this guy makes a lot of content trying to get right-wing pundits' uh, attention, and they don't want to give it to him. I understand that. Um, But ultimately, Sam is the only one that wins here. If you look at his YouTube channel, this has basically been a dead channel, uh, gaining 30,000 subscribers in the last... uh, I don't know, eight months? 
uh, but now 20,000 or 10,000 yesterday, 20,000 days. So congratulations to Sam. Um, I don't know if I would feel like that's a win. I think it's pretty sad um, that when so many people don't want to talk to you and then you have to weasel your way in, you have to like Trojan your horse, Trojan horse your way into the conversation. I don't actually see that as a W. I see that as pretty pathetic. Um, you know, the fact that Crowder never would have platformed him any other way, so he had to use Ethan to get on. Like, that's just slimy and sad. Steven Crowder tweets out, 978D chess, dot, dot, dot. Now, that sounds like extreme copium, okay? Extreme. Like, some of the most extreme copium that's ever copiumed. However, once we started getting more context, once the details of what had occurred started to trickle forward, we learned some things. The context here is Steven's dad, who's also his manager, accidentally booked Steven to debate Sam Cedar after Cold Feet Crowder dodged the last debate minutes before they're going live, claiming his pregnant wife had a medical emergency. Interesting. So, if we can recap, Steven Crowder goes on H3H3. They're having a conversation. Now, we don't know exactly the full details of what was uh, discovered uh, during that. However, there was a scenario in which uh, Steven Crowder got jabated, if you will, uh, very Keemstar-esque, and, and pulled into the fray, and suddenly Sam Cedar appeared on, on, the, uh, on the event. Uh, I think I have a, a trailer for it right here. This is provided to us by uh, Steven Crowder himself. I don't think I've ever seen a more perfect encapsulation of group thing. The CDC is like this whole governmental body just tell us what to do. You don't have to think about it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, my point is that if you're so f***ing stupid, then yeah, you should listen to the CDC, bro. You and I can talk about it. It is appointed to a man once to be invited on the show. And if you don't, if you decline, and everyone now knows that you will, but I will never address you again. I bet this guy's gonna do anything he can to avoid actually debate. Uh, I don't wanna make it too easy for you. Oh, okay. So, uh, I've prepared. I had no idea this was going to happen! You know Steven, you're wearing that we holster. agreed. Yeah? So? Whatever, whatever he's paying his editor, it's not enough. Is is all I could think of when when I saw that. I was like, God damn! Holy shit! That post is almost ratioed. I'm I'm halfway to a ratio with Stephen Crowder with that. Damn! I I happened to be watching the majority report, uh, and it was good timing because uh, you know Sam Cedar re re released an official that statement. The, we have not revealed the extent of the comment. Ah! ah. The, the, the edging well, part is that you you've not you know. Well, I mean, part of that is, to be honest, is like none of this would have happened without uh, H3. Yeah. And it's their, it, they set it up. I'm just trying to respect their, uh, their ownership of the, the, the drama that took place up to there. Um, and now look, I, I am sensitive to the uh, critique this is silliness. This is YouTube, you know, stupidness. Oh, uh, did you see what Tim Pool said? Yeah, Tim Pool said the drama what? grifters grift on. Yes, yes, yes. Talk about talk about the uh, pot <laughs> calling the kettle of black, but um, <laughs> true, true. So you want to give us like what happened? You want to you want to run us through like what was going on in your mind yeah. and and how this started? So we um we're exporting the actually we are, we're uploading it right now so it's gonna hit how about the youtube hopefully in a couple hours 60 seconds oh wow. um, what happened was oh yeah it's gonna be up tonight i think hopefully yeah steven said he's uploading it tomorrow so he's like i'm not gonna let this motherfucker try to he's gonna try to spin it like he knew that something was gonna happen or that like he's the victim he's definitely gonna play the victim but um well, he is the victim. We 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 we, we murdered him. He, oh shit! So really? So you you want to give us a tease? Like, so it did happen. Are you okay. wearing holsters right now? Yeah. Yes. Yes. We're all wearing holsters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of course. I got. I'm not gonna. I can't go in the presence of such masculine energy without holsters myself. Here, I'll uh, in know. honor of in honor of Stephen Crowder, I'll put a Glock on my on my desk because he does that too. Yeah. 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 Here you go. I'll just I'll put it right here. Can you do that on Twitch? I mean, it's not real. It's an airsoft gun, so. Okay. 
Yeah. I, I don't have like a cool one that like looks like this because yeah, I know he has it on his desk. Like we're just so does he? I didn't get a chance to ask him. Does he? Does he actually carry a gun in his podcast studio? Uh, like, I don't know. It, it, but that would that would be a wonderful question. Like, who are you worried about? Like, is someone going to mm -hmm. come into your podcast studio like with a death squad? So you need to be yeah, carrying. Get, so, so what happened is, well was enough. me and Steven were having these back and forths. He called me. Uh, he said that the clip of me talking about uh, something about co I want. I was just like, I want everyone to get vaccinated. That's obviously something that I'm interested in as a uh, sane, rational human being. Yeah, you're a lived he, hard, a pussy. That's why. Yes, yes. Um, and so he thought he called the clip of me talking about uh, saying something like you should you can trust scientists. It's OK. He said it was his favorite clip in, of the year. And he lampooned us and then we ribbed him back. It was a whole back and forth. And then eventually he was just like Ethan Klein. I challenge you to a debate. This is the only time I will ever challenge you. And I'll never talk about you again because I, re I rely on all of my relevancy, you know, from Steven Crowder. So that was a big hit to me emotionally, him saying he would never talk about me again. But anyway, we thought it was so, we thought it was so rich that he was willing to debate, to debate me, someone who is not, a political minded person, somebody who is, um, who is not a debater and someone who let's be honest is not even that smart. <laughs> and so we brought up, uh, we thought like, let's debate this guy and, um, let's get someone who actually is all those things that, that I'm not. Cause like, if you're having a debate, it should just be on the merits. What does it matter with who he wanted to debate the, the, the merits of, you know, trusting authority or whatever the fuck he says. So, okay. And so what happened was Dan figured out some technological sorcery because we, we got him so good because we put all the ball in his court. It was his Zoom call. They sent the link. They sent the time. They felt very comfortable that there was no way for us to get him. So we joined their Zoom link this morning. And Dan, as I said, figured out some black sorcery where he could zip uh, Sam's feed. He could cross the feet. Ghostbuster style. Yeah. Wow. And so we got to the point where we're like, okay, well, let's do this thing. And then kind of Sam just popped up. And the, the result of it, which I don't want to give away, is just Steven had a meltdown. And he gave something away in his fit of passion that it will haunt him his whole career. No way. Yeah, it oh, was a complete. Wow. It was a complete. Uh, it was a complete uh, fatality. Oh, that's exciting! I'm so excited to see this because you you saw the the cut that he did, right? Uh, like the yeah, 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 when, yeah. When I saw that, because I'm familiar with the drama between you and him, like because I thought it was so dumb that he was like upset at you for saying like. Listen, if you're too fucking dumb to like yeah. follow basic pr principles, like if, and, and if you're getting your news, yeah, if you're getting your news from Facebook, you don't need to doubt uh, Fauci's credentials. Yeah, and uh, I, I and he posted that on the on the intro, which I thought yeah, was amazing because it like makes you look good. <laughs> like, well, he. I think right now what happened after the call is they first of all panicked. And right now they're in um they're having a red alert moment where they're trying their best to spin this in a way where he doesn't look like a tool, which is going to be very difficult for them. You know, I think his his audience will eat up whatever he says, but I think at large, this is going to be uh, this is going to be one for the books for old Steven Crowder. I'm so stoked! I'm so and excited. There's one other really funny detail, is that. Because when we were going back and forth with Steven, Dan called him out. He said, debate Sam Cedar, stop being a bitch. And so we knew that that was on his radar a little bit. And so we were actually scheduled to have this debate last Monday. And what happened was um, Sam ended his show early for this little ruse we were pulling on him. And last minute, right when Sam ends his show, Crowder has a family emergency. 
Now, I don't, I don't know if there was a family emergency or not. The timing was coincidental. But then when you think about it, so fast forward to this week, we've, we scheduled again for this week. And what we did this time is we had Sam pre-record his show and broadcast it live so that Crowder thought Sam was live. So we call in at 12, right when Sam's st show starts, and we're doing a, Sam, a, a, a sound test. Crowder is conspicuously not at his desk. But so now we're doing the sound test. Crowder's out of screen. Then all of a sudden, when Sam's show goes live with this pre-record, Crowder comes into the frame and says, hi. Now, what <laughs> happens next? What happens next will be the best thing. You've, it will be the best thing ever. Well, I, I saw bits and pieces of it. He was like, oh, I knew this was going to happen. Oh, like he was just like being sarcastic. But it seems like he seemed very frazzled. And uh... well, yeah, he, he put the camera. He wouldn't even put the camera on him at first. Once once Sam came out and I was like, put the camera on you. Don't be a coward. Don't be a coward. But you oh. could tell that it was just sheer pandemonium in the studio. He was telling his dad, cut the feed, telling people to get in spot. You know, it's it's it, 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 I could, it couldn't have it couldn't have come out better. Honestly, I wasn't sure how it was going to come out. It really couldn't have come out any better. I mean, he's yeah. a, he's an intellectual giant. He destroys, uh, you know, college freshmen in the marketplace of ideas by using like, uh, you know, think tank, uh, backed messaging. Like he uses the dialogue tree very well. So I thought maybe he could effectively use that on, on Sam Cedar as well. I'm surprised that he wasn't more confident in his dialogue tree against someone like well, Sam Cedar. Well, we tried to foster a conversation between them. You know, because Crowder had expressed that he was very eager to have a conversation. And um, we thought, well, well, what's the difference if it's me or Sam? You want to have this conversation? Let's do it. But he was very uh, he was very opposed to talking to Sam. But the good thing is we we had a whole there was just a lot of yelling and freaking out for, I would say, a good 15 minutes. Right, Dan? That, it felt like 15 minutes because it was just so it was brutal. juicy, bro. It, it was, it was maybe, okay. our, our, What I really percent. expected was Crowder just to hang up, but he did not hang up. He fought. Uh, uh, he That's flailed. Awesome. I'll say. That's and, awesome. And, and he, there's like I said, he in the heat of the moment, he says something that he will forever regret. <laughs> oh, that makes me so excited! That makes me so excited, dude. That's yeah. I'm, I'm very, excited I'm very stoked. I mean, you're going to get a lot yeah. of hatred from the right for this. I'm just letting you know, like Tim Pool oh, I mean, already, already been Tim Pool's already yeah. tweeted about it saying you're a drama baiter. Like this is all you yeah, do is it. drama. But yeah, uh, if you check that tweet, uh, it was under someone's tweet, right? It had two likes and 120 responses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is something that uh, a lot of people on the internet have been waiting for, for a long time, because like these intellectual giants, uh, the intellectual giants such as, uh, you know, uh, Steven Crowder and Ben Shabibo, they like, they make all of their, they make all of their money by looking as, uh, though they are always open for debates and then they right. rarely ever want to debate anyone who is like capable. What is, you know, I was, yeah, go ahead. I was talking backstage with the guys that I will say in Tim Pool's defense that he actually does debate with these guys which I will say is more respectable than these other guys who just dodge. Um, but yeah, he's, he's also, I, I'm perfectly happy being hated by them. I, I want to be hated by the people that, uh, you know, I want to be hated by the people that, that I should be hated by, you know, does, what do you think about 978 dimensional chess? Do you think that that's what occurred? Do you think this is like, a yeah, I was like, Hmm. I was like, I don't know what he's talking about. The only thing, what I think happened is that he filmed something afterwards to try to make it look like he called this happening. Where he Maybe, all, yeah. all, but, but that's not really, that's not really, he didn't get one on us at all. I mean, um, so if I'm playing 250,000 uh, degree chess, I accept that. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, 
you can play 978 dimensional chess or whatever, but then ultimately if you lose, you still lost on on all of those dimensions, right? So Yeah, I beat I beat I beat him in, I beat him from the first down to the 978,000th dimension of chess. I, yeah, so I by the way, I love that you admit that uh, when you're like, yeah, I'm not fucking a great debater. I like I'm I'm stupid like who cares? Like I'm not this is it, not it, what I do. It, that's it. That's why the, his offer to bait me is just disingenuous. It's like you want to look good for your audience, but like we both know that I'm not a good opponent for you to debate. Yeah, uh, yeah. He described it as a layup, and it would be if I was dumb enough to debate him one on one, or gullible enough. But uh, you know, another thing that Stephen, you should ask Stephen about, or well, I didn't get the chance, but is that lawsuit that all the conservatives are super hyped over doesn't exist did you know that what lawsuit steven suing youtube you know, you saw the hubbub that everyone's all stoked on this oh wait, i didn't crowder even know lawsuit. that steven crowder was suing youtube for what for um <clears throat> for banning them for, or something for for demonetizing his channel for suspending him and stuff he made all this hubbub about how he's suing and then like babibo and tim pool and everyone was getting all hyped and he's you know it's part of the grift and um there's no lawsuit, no, no public record of it that I could find. And as you know, lawsuits are all public record, so it should be there. To now the roast, it's been a big, big, beautiful week of uh, H3 podcast. Whoa, what a fucking nightmare. I have to say that <laughs> I've been like enjoying that Crowder moment for the whole week. Yeah, you're. You know? I know. <laughs> I mean, I knew it was great, but I didn't realize it was going to be such a moment because I feel like yeah. the internet's been buzzing about this Crowder v. Sam Cedar thing, <laughs> and uh, I just love it because there's been such a meltdown. <laughs> um, I'm going to talk about that. All right, let's talk about Crowder. Crowder released a video trying to. For those of you guys who didn't see. Crowder is this com is the the work he's a conservative commentator and apparent a cell he apparently he says he's a comedian but I haven't seen any evidence of that he always says he's a comedian but like what, the, what a fucking nightmare <laughs> where the joke I don't get it <laughs> anyway he we we completely owned him he's been dodging this uh, other political commentator called um, Sam Cedar who's a very intelligent, skilled uh, political analyst and debater, and Crowder, because he's full of shit, and he knows that his, all of his beliefs are just a total grift, that, and it all falls apart immediately when, when uh, faced with the real opponent. He's been dodging him. We got him good. He wanted to debate me, and we surprised him with Sam Cedar. Uh, you guys have probably all seen the video, but he titled his video, The Greatest Self-Own. H3 H3 wrecks himself and brags about it. <laughs> I thought Ethan was a stand-up guy. Yeah, I don't know who told him that. <laughs> Wrong. I was like, who told you that, bro? <laughs> I thought we were best friends. Well, he, it's, it's, okay, so here, we put together a little um, edit to show the, all of the ironies, inconsistency, and lies of Steven. Um, first, you guys remember when this whole this whole rift started he was going ethan who is his name ethan mm -hmm. i don't know who he is ethan, ethan? is it ethan but i don't have to think about it dude but then suddenly when i get in front of him he's like oh h3 he's one of the ogs i love his content so here or i used to love his content which is what all the conservatives say to burn me apparently it's like yeah well i'm glad you don't anymore that's kind of the point i don't want you watching my shit Here's something that I really wanted to touch on. Oh boy. This guy, uh, I think his name, what's his, what's what's his, his name, name there, uh, uh, Token uh, Allen? Is, it, is his real name Ethan? Ethan? Ethan. Ethan? Ethan? Yeah. Is it? Uh, the H. Yeah, yeah. It's Ethan. 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 What is it? Ethan? <laughs> Ethan? How can you? <laughs> so awkward. I've never seen someone pretend so hard not <laughs> yeah. to know someone. It's such a regular name. Like, you, yeah, you said it right. Ethan? Uh, Ethan? Don't have to think about it, dude. <laughs> Ethan? Is it there? Ethan Klein, your mic's on there. I remember him back in the day, and I used to... Okay, so now here he is talking about me and, and where I self-owned. Back in the day, and I used to... He remembers I didn't really me. like his content, but I remember I supported him where he said, Hey, YouTube should actually find a way to monetize my content. I don't do... We don't do debates based on a lie. I just don't want to have a debate Bruh. based on a lie. <laughs> so that was his defense, is that you want to have a debate based on a lie? Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means. Oh, that he wasn't... 
because he was lied about Sam Cedar being here. Because he wanted to have a debate on, with somebody that is not a debater, is not familiar with yeah. all the politics, <laughs> so that he can look like a cool, epic dude. Yeah. But you know what? Here, this was actually great. This guy, uh, Senk, is that how you say his name? Uh, Jenk. Oh, Jenk. From the Young Turks, he's like... Hassan's uncle. Yeah, Hassan's uncle, actually, oh. interestingly. Um, was like, this guy's so full of shit, he ambushed me at South by Southwest. So for him to be like, oh, I don't want to debate based on this, is like, once again, one of the many hypocrisies and cowardice of Steven Crowder. I'll play it here. <laughs> This is Steven That's Crowder, Crowder, the comedian, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> right. I think he's mostly just funny because, or I think he's mostly just angry because what we did was actually funny. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's a moral change! It takes me, you think your manager is not happening! It's bullshit! <laughs> Which this is way more disrespectful okay. than what yeah. we did. Okay. This is not yeah, he's crashing his panel. Apparently, he bought a super expensive ticket, crashed the panel, and then wouldn't leave, by the way, until he was forcibly removed by security. <laughs> so fucking stupid, bro. But, but honestly, his biggest crime is just not even being funny, right? Like, gotta say, the guy is not funny. For some, he, how does he consider himself a comedian with a straight face? Is beyond me. Okay. This is a bloody guy. You know that bullshit. Okay. 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 Right. He, he basically. He basically. What he does. Is he makes money. Uh, I'm gonna go up there and say wow. what he says. That's so annoying. <laughs> what? Right. Like, so again, he's such a he's he's such a coward bitch that he's gonna cry about being ambushed. He's done, he's done the same thing, dude. Just get the fuck over what, yourself. What a fucking nightmare. You, yeah. He brought. He brought my Someone like a Sam Cedar who just <laughs> he didn't even he wait. Didn't even... So he says now Sam said he wouldn't let him speak, which is odd because Crowder was just panicking and shouting over everybody <laughs> the whole time. And you could see Sam sitting patiently, respectfully, because Sam really actually wanted to have a conversation, as we all did want to see that. And Crowder is just panicking and flailing. The whole time, as you'll see here. Never lets you speak. Yes, that's Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan and, and, Rogan and, and Ben Shapiro and, and Dave Rubin and Jordan Peterson and Noam Chomsky and Sam Harris. Everyone's been avoiding. And not just attempting to get your audience by jumping in. <laughs> well, I, I debated with uh, Charlie Kirk. <laughs> Stephen, I mean, it's okay. about issues. Let's about talk issues, about those yeah. issues. I think six or seven million I think, subscribers. Let me answer. Can I, I answer your question? Can I answer your question? Can I answer your question? Sure. You want me to answer your question? My audience would say Sam who? Uh, for me, uh, the whole, by the way, his whole argument was like, nobody knows who you are. Then why is this turned into such a big story? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Clearly, everybody knows who he is and knows about this thing of you not wanting to debate him yeah. because it be turned into this huge story. So, like, basically. Also, I'm sorry, but a million subscribers, that's, well, uh, that's not little. Of course not. That's a massive <laughs> channel. Yeah. Especially for, like, political topic right it's niche yeah and he's very much in the details where crowder is just doing like performative like clickbait mm -hmm. outrage stuff where sam's yeah, actually Sam has like hour-long yeah. interviews about a single issue it's very dry and detailed yeah i had no idea this was going to happen such a panic <laughs> but it's it's just funny because basically his two arguments was one nobody knows who you are which he immediately contradicted himself by admitting that he was following his show to watch <laughs> if he went live the previous week. So we actually yeah. had to dupe him, pre-record, fake going live to get him to go on with us this time. So, And also by the evidence that the entire internet exploded talking about this yeah. is further proof that everybody knows who he is. But again, you know, the ultimate slam dunk to that is like, if you don't want to have debates with people who are... Uh, you who people don't know who they are, then why do you set up at college campuses? Right. So, so fucking stupid, bro. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, the guy, it doesn't make... You know what's bizarre, too? Uh, maybe, I didn't watch the entirety of his version of the events or whatever, but maybe somebody who did, did he try and frame it as if Ethan was the one that challenged him to a debate? Because I'm seeing that from his really? supporters oh, all really? over the place. I'm yes. like, 
Are they unaware oh, really? that really Stephen is the one who started this? Oh. He, he issued the challenge. Oh yeah. Day. So in his response video, he said it about four times. He said that Ethan was the one that and you know reached out to me. He says real quick, oh, I invited him first on the show, but then like throughout the show, like four different on four different occasions. He laid like, down the gauntlet. Oh, wow. right. It's honestly, indisputable. I, honestly, I don't really even care. It's like you just got owned, bro. You yeah. just got punked. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> he goes weird. He wrote me this long email about. Um, his dad actually wrote this email. He keeps to tap dancing around the fact that his dad is his booker and his mm -hmm. handler and everything. <laughs> his dad wrote us an email being like, just a one-on-one -on -one debate, no razzes, <laughs> no funny business. And I didn't even respond. I was like, dude, just fucking set up the debate, douche. There will be razzes. I'm gonna, you're be gonna razz you, bro. <laughs> I didn't agree to anything, by the way. I didn't uh -huh. say, okay, no funny business. Right, he said, when I was communicating with his dad as well, he said something like, uh, you know, no, no goofs, uh, let's just play the straight or whatever. I didn't even agree to that. Yeah, I didn't. I, I just didn't said, just, I said, I all here, just that. send me the Zoom link. <laughs> Not that it matters, even. It's like, if you're such a, if you're such a genius that predicted this, you probably should have been better prepared for it. Yep. <laughs> so it's like everything he's tried to say to excuse this is just absolutely contradicted by what happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. A man makes an agreement. No, but he definitely, he challenged, my whole point of satirizing this was because he challenged me to a debate. Yeah, and it's like, why? And I was like, exactly. Why? <laughs> Exactly. So I was like, okay, let's have a debate. We saw the opportunity, and we took it. And you're a sucker. Let me be very clear. Ethan Klein reached out and asked Steven Crowder for his time. Hey, Steven, I'm down to debate. It could be fun, maybe about the coof. Since the Dr. Fauci says mask thing started this all, I'm open, though. Let me know how you want to do it. So to be clear, Ethan reached out asked Stephen to debate, in my opinion, either the entire time planning, lying the entire time, which makes him uh, a coward and pathetic, or once Stephen Crowder agreed, quickly finding a substitute, which is even worse. Stephen replies, hey man, thanks for reaching out. Again, Ethan Klein asked for this. I do appreciate it, really. Anyone who enters the arena has my respect and I'll be sure that's reflected on air. If you send your email, I can have Darren reach out and set it up. Easiest would probably be just to tape it on Skype either this week or next based on some travel stuff. You can use it too, the clips, if you want to run it unedited, obviously. No tricks, no zags, just you and me. Again, Ethan Klein agreeing, just you and me. I'll make sure none of my buddies are in the studio to be any kind of distraction. We can talk about the disagreement that we fundamentally had uh, initially on trusting authoritative sources to be what degree. It's very clear to me that Steven Crowder is being polite, and I believe strongly that he thought Ethan was going to come on in good faith. Ethan replies, yeah, those are good topics. Could we do uh, one debate on our show and one on yours? Meaning, would you come on H3? Uh, uh, yeah, your producer, though. He can email my guy, Dan. Gives Dan his email. He's my producer. They can work out the times. Oh, I see. We'll have one debate we can both use. That's cool. I'm down for that. Sounds good. Which means, of course, he's saying, like, okay, now we can both use the same, the same clips. Um, and then he goes on to show the actual emails that they exchanged. Uh, go back to that. Hold on a second. <clears throat> so you see, Ethan is the one that reached out. So as far as, so anything that happened, anything that happened past the, the deception is null and void. <laughs> Simple as that, dude. <laughs> And I don't know who told you I was a good guy. You spent like three episodes trashing me, so I don't. I, I'm confused by what made you think that.
agreement and a man is good to his word. Yeah. This really comes down to an agreement, good to your word, and I know you always have two... I didn't ever agree to shit. You should see the conversation. <laughs> I literally didn't agree to anything you said. I, he showed the DMs, Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, he, he just showed the Yeah, DMs. so everybody can see it. You I, didn't agree to that. He just, he's like, okay, here, blah, 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 blah. I was like, just send the link, douchebag. <laughs> I didn't agree to anything. But at the same time, in his response video, he's talking about switching up the subject on you. In this part we're watching right now, he's saying he wanted to switch and talk about big tech. Great point. Oh. Yeah, because he was like, let's talk about COVID and trusting authorities and stuff. I obviously didn't give a fuck what we were going to debate because the whole time I was, knew we were just going <laughs> to yeah. dunk on him. Um, but here he is saying he was going to he was going to try to switch the topic on Ooh. me. Science will claim your side wins, but really there's only one side that's based on a lie. And I just I wish it didn't happen because I really wanted to talk to him about his his relationship yeah. with Susan Wojcicki and and um, yeah. oh what? <laughs> so he was going to try to chat me about my relationship with Susan Wojcicki. <laughs> What relationship? That I took a photo with her once. <laughs> you know what that is, right? But That's... is that the part of the Oh, you think advanced... it's the Jewish, the Jewish conspiracy? Yeah. Oh, advanced that isn't what I was going to say, but that's actually yeah. a good point as well. <laughs> no, I was, that's, that's him uh, having a conversation with, uh, with our buddy Jeremy. Jeremy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Where else would that come from? Come on. A hundred percent. I believe Jeremy <laughs> is the source of... All the quartering, the yeah. Yes, because mm -hmm. he quartering right. is uh, a huge fan of Stephen Crowder what and a has great even source. and has been a guest on his show several times. So oh. just peed in my basement. Everyone, Zach, come on, what do we I come just on? Peed in I, my basement. You. What I got a bag? <laughs> I was my telling Dan that pizza whenever me. we did the interview, whenever we got Crowder, that Jeremy's pissing everywhere. Like that, I feel <laughs> so pissing all over his house, all dude. over the dog, the neighborhood, <laughs> the, the, everywhere. Well, I would assume there's probably some evidence of that. There will be. My wife just went out for pizza without me. My wife but went out for pizza some, without me. To everyone that follows that whole um, conspiracy of you having a relationship with Susan, there is some like advanced racism to that, right? Yeah, because I, yeah. all I did was say, <laughs> she came to our podcast studio one time. I talked to her about, mo by the way, I tried to fucking benefit all these dipshits. I know. I talked to her about to monetizing mature content. Yeah. I was like, I said to her, why is it that when I talk about something racy or I have content made for adults that I can't get ads when if you go watch South Park or something on Comedy Central, these are the highest advertised shows. I was like, mm -hmm. it literally doesn't make sense. And I'm she's deep said, undercover. And so, <laughs> now, and so now in their minds, it's turned into this uh, Jewish conspiracy where I'm best friends with, with and, uh, and Susan Wojcicki. And that was Wojcicki. it. It was like one meeting. Okay, bye. Um, she, she meets a lot of creators. Yeah, she met like 10 creators on that trip to L.A. And so anyway, this is him all having ulterior motives. So once again, just being a total hypocrite, you know, I just beat him to the punch. So, so tell me about your relationship with Ch J Susan Wojcicki. She's Jewish, right, by the way, and uh, you are as well. You guys go to the same synagogue? or Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, interesting. Good. <laughs> A uh, flip in the support of yeah. big tech, because yeah. also keep in mind, too, I had to navigate some murky waters here because the goal was to remove me from medical misinformation and any conversations right. about COVID. Ethan has talked about that in the past. said your co-host sounds like a drunk when his co-host sounds like Helen Keller. Okay, hold on. I didn't say you sound like a drunk. I said you are a drunk. <laughs> 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 Every time I see this guy, he's sitting there with a mug and his face is bloodshot. And I'm like, this guy is drunk all the time. <laughs> and so this was very early in the morning. So you probably hadn't had your first sip of alcohol yet. <laughs> Apparently they said he is a recovering alcoholic. So I guess the, the, oh. the, the I hit the, it right on the head there. Yeah. Touched a nerve. Yeah. And by the way, I said he was a little leprechaun. I wasn't trying to make fun of his stature that he, he actually does. His face is very like Lucky Charms-ish. But I was making fun because he came dressed as like Peter Pan as a an episode before. And I was just uh, making fun of their little dress up. I think that was actually the other host or the other. Uh, well, regardless, I, I, I was just, yeah, I was, yeah. I, I was recalling the costumes. Yeah. But the, the, he is very Lucky Charms-ish. And stature and face. So, it works. That in the past. Said your co-host sounds like a drunk when his co-host sounds like Helen Keller learning water. <laughs> <laughs> He's making fun of you because you have an accent. Also, they don't like women. He said, didn't one mm -hmm. of them say stop being a woman to me? Yeah. He said he's never met such a woman. Yeah. Really? Something like that, pretty right? Yeah, yeah, he did. It's pretty yeah. gay. <laughs> <laughs> You've never met such a woman? 
I make the gay jokes because they're such such raging homophobes and transphobes, of course. And I got news for you. That means you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who? What kind of in this year? What kind of insult is that to say? I've never met such a woman. Like, dude, how fucking traumatized were you by your mother? I mean, what is that? <laughs> yeah. So, how do you, what do you think about the comparison to Helen Keller? I don't know. I mean, this this guy especially is like so unfunny. Yeah. I couldn't care less what he says. I think he's just there to make Steven look funny by comparison. Maybe. You know? So fucking stupid, bro. <laughs> 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 really, the issue is, um, is is Ethan's wife because it's your job to try and beat the cowardice out of your husband because yeah. you're gonna have a little you're gonna have <laughs> right. a little boy, Jeez. right? Really? That's the thing. Yeah. When you have a son, you have to make sure that they understand what integrity is. I mean, Stephen, that's rich coming from the guy who lied about his fucking pr pregnant wife that's having rich a medical emergency. Coming from the guy who still has his dad running his business. <laughs> <laughs> Get him, Rila. Get him. Who's getting roasted today, me or Steven? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, well, what a fucking nightmare. You, Steven. Yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, I said the Spartan joke again. I said, do you know Spartans have man love with children? It's because he's got the Spartan armored system on his desk. But once again, he's such a homophobe that I find it deeply ironic that this these people love gay sex the the spartans they're huge into gay sex ethan i have to i have to compliment you on on that joke uh because that was such a perfect lead-in to bringing yeah. Yeah. i mean it just totally was just like well i feel like it i just want to make it clear because i feel like a lot of people weren't sure what i was doing there they're like what it's just a weird comment maybe but it's a reference to the spartan on the desk so. it was it was just chef kiss <laughs> I, I did a good job of just putting him off balance oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. totally so fucked the shit up it, so many things in that video just worked perfectly <laughs> i mean i remember you guys talking about vape nation once how just everything just lined up perfectly right. that's yeah. what it was like from yeah, chewing yeah, the gum mag magical moment till at, so like right when he hung up here you're like cold feet again and then he hung up right again <laughs> after that it was it was beautiful i just wish you would have actually debated and not been such a coward genuinely i i that was the preferable outcome here. Just I to be never clear. expected him to debate. I knew he would just, um, just leave the chat. Yeah, I mean the the irony is saying I knew you would do anything to avoid debating, and that's exactly what he did. Yeah, you know. I actually my my bet was that it was just going to be an instant hang up. I was I was actually surprised he <laughs> right. stuck around as long as he did. I'm glad he did. Me too. Yeah. I, I am. I thought he would. Uh, I thought he would hang up. I thought it would just been like fuck you. I'm gone. <laughs> I thought Ethan was a stand up guy. Although he, uh, dude, he would have. Yeah. No, I, again, I love that line because I never, nobody I know ever told him that. Who's standing up? Ethan, please stand Ethan. up. Ethan, oh man. Ethan, please stand up. <laughs> For me, a man makes an agreement and a man is good to his word. Change my mind uh, is very different. Well, I'm not a man. I'm the most woman, apparently. Yeah. Apparently, men, <laughs> men keep their word and women lie. You are the most woman person I've ever met. I am delivered! Okay. I'm a debate. I changed my mind. The whole goal to a change my mind, for example, is an anti-debate. He looks like an what? aging oh, toddler. Right. The Keep only thing. An aging toddler? What? That's what I'm saying. This guy's so unfunny. But look at him. <laughs> look at him. Also, all toddlers are aging. Just right. <laughs> Good point, AB. Thank you. And That's you look. Wait, point. hold on. They an come aging up, toddler. They come up with the most random, unfunny jokes that I have ever heard. Yeah. I don't know if this is like conservative humor. Well, the thing is, he called. He that's called... not computing in my brain, but they're like so unfunny, <laughs> these guys. A lot of the funny things we've heard Hassan said, it's like high level racism. Yeah. He has like a PhD in racism. Like what he was trying to say about Sam's eyes. He said eyes. Sam is the velveteen rabbit, and everyone was like everyone in was... the lab trying to figure out what that meant. <laughs> he said it twice. I was like, I, I was Googling it in real time. I'm like, what is velveteen rabbit? Is this old storybook? Like, what I is think that I do. I, I do think it was uh, uh, like BDI. Uh, I do think it was an anti-Semitic trope. I really do. I saw yeah. an anti-Semitic. Yeah, I saw a Reddit post that said it's based on some old uh, whatever about saying some that Jews don't have a soul because right. he's like, oh, uh, his homie said, and do you have a soul? Do you have a yeah. soul? Yeah, let me see your eyes yeah. and see if you have a soul. Yeah. Yeah, all toddlers are aging. That's a really good point, AB. Because that, that, that's the normal state of being a toddler. <laughs> what am I, Benjamin Button? What am I, aging backwards? I mean, what the fuck? Unless you're like Crowder where you don't grow up. You just... Stay yeah, daddy's right. boy forever. Yep. Daddy. 
Daddy, I had a hard day at work. <laughs> He's dunking his donuts. And I know that was too easy, but you're a fat piece of shit. Okay, bro. The problem that I have with this joke is that he says that the only thing... just too funny. He says... Okay. The only thing he's dunking is donuts. I'm like, did you get that from jokes.com? I mean, that could, be, that could be literally used on anybody in any situation. Yeah. That guy literally can't say one relevant joke. The only thing he's dunking is donuts. <laughs> dude, last time I checked, you were a fat fucking little porky pig, dude. You look like a porky pig, bro. Just put a some apple in your mouth and cook you up for fucking... Spit roast, baby. <laughs> I'm gonna spit roast you, boy. He, lo he looks magically delicious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, he, he's like the he's like, <laughs> Zach and Jeez. dude. He's the um, he's the Lucky Charms. Uh, he's the Lucky Charms. Uh, oh, he's the Lucky <laughs> Charms dick. Leprechaun. If it was all mushrooms, <laughs> fuck! I can't. He's a good friend. I have a good joke. He's the Lucky Charms <laughs> Leprechaun. If it was all marshmallows. Ah. Uh. Oh. You said mushrooms. Good, right? Yeah, I know I said mushrooms. Yeah, it would have been better the first time. I huh? tried! My brain don't work so good. I tried to think, but nothing happened. <laughs> but can you imagine if I went to jokes.com and prepped? The only thing he's dunking is donuts. I use that joke every day. Yeah. So, I don't know if I'd want to watch his show or rather watch uh, two hours of the San Francisco Gay Chorus. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd rather play the San Francisco could... Gay Chorus. With... These guys literally can't even not go homophobic. <laughs> I said the Gay Chorus. Did y'all catch that? I would rather watch the Gay Chorus. So, who is gay? Why do gay people make you so uncomfortable, Steven? You need to ask yourself that. Right. Be straighter. <laughs> I'd rather pay for front row nickel seats. <laughs> Oh, Zach's fucking mad then now, again, dude. it would be more straight. Uh... Yeah. Hmm. Implying Nickelback is gay? Is Apparently, that... Nickelback Apparently, and Nickelback and... Every... Nickelback is the manliest shit, Steven. <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. Here we go. Why do you think Steven is so... But can you believe that this is how he speaks? Like, his uh, analogy to what's not good is how gay it is? Yeah, or female energy it is. That, I mean, this is it's like just... when I was in middle school. Yeah, and then you grow you, up. It's hard to believe that it's real. But the, he obviously being gayness or ho homosexuality makes him so uncomfortable that it makes me wonder. <laughs> yeah, it does make me wonder. He goes, "I'd rather it, I don't know what's gayer, watching Ethan or gay seats." Mm, I never right. sucked any ding dongs. <laughs> I think Crowder. I'm not going to say it, but you know what I'm thinking. Suck at a ding dong. <laughs> yep. Far from the first to speculate. <laughs> Far from the mm. first. I'm afraid, frankly, that he used to have a bad temper. I'm afraid of it coming back. I'm afraid of Mr. Hyde rearing his ugly bisexual head. That was a, sm that was a short phase. Um, no, I'm, I'm afraid. Um, we are at uh, 38 minutes. We should really do our ads. Oh, okay. We have an ad, but actually, well, interestingly enough, um, we've been talking about Steven's dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was super pissed because we didn't stick to our word or whatever. He's like, Steven's dad emailed me. He's like, you are such a woman. You are, he's like. He's like, you're not invited to our house anymore. You can't play with my son. <laughs> my son's a timeout because of you. My son's watching the gay, what did he say about the, the gay? The San Francisco gay chorus. Um, Is that a thing? I mean, Is yeah. That's a real, yeah. Why does he know about that? Why does he have that in his back pocket? <laughs> Um, it's <laughs> just, dude, the guy is flaming. Steven is, uh, San Francisco gay course. That's just a retort that Steven keeps in his back pocket. So anyway, his dad wanted to call in and, uh, and scold us. Here we go. The San Francisco gay men's chorus is the first openly gay chorus. One of the world's largest male choruses in the group often credited with creating the LGBT uh, quarrel movement. So Stephen so is gay. Stephen is fantasizing about getting front row seats to that. Mm -hmm. He is, uh, and they're probably very musically talented. So it would be a good. Oh yeah, show. they're very famous. Um, uh, Stephen, he has a lot of what people have referred to as theater kid energy. If you um, mm. if you knew the theater kids in high school at all, um, it's a certain type. 
And with all the dress up and theatrics that he seems to always enjoy doing, um, you know, it's not really surprising that he's familiar with the uh, mm. with the gay chorus. Well, I don't want to out him. You know, it's not uh, it's not my place to out. We don't know anything. Doesn't that make you? No, that's what I'm saying. It's not my place to out him. Sure. Yeah. If he's in the closet, it's not my place to take him out. <laughs> right. Right. Or even to point out that he's in the closet. Right. Or if even if there is a closet. I'm sure he has a closet in his house. Maybe more than most. He might spend time in there. He might. I mean, surely he's picking out outfits. He goes in the closet. How long is he in the closet? And I got news for you. That means you're gay. A long time. <laughs> all right. Let's do these ads. Really fun. You guys all saw our big moment with Steven Crowder. Yeah. The big debate. I thought Ethan was a stand-up guy. It was a huge story, <laughs> especially in the political world. So there's this guy, Tim Poole, who was a right-wing commentator. Yeah. Who got so heated up. By the way, is the thing we've prepared ready? Uh, yes. Okay, good. Uh, he got so heated up about this. You got to see this. He's so angry at me. He's so angry. Love that. Um... And it's just too funny not to watch. So this is Tim Pool addressing me uh, with the with the debate. Ethan here. and the content he makes is drama pop culture, like I said. And when he weighs into political spaces, it, it's actually very damaging to our discourse. I'm not saying that he's not allowed to. I'm not saying that uh, he should stop. I'm just saying it does cause damage. Same is true for me or anybody else. However, there's political I'm just ideology. Saying Whoa. No, dude, the Rees, the Rees coming off this, I, I just find that it's I mean, so ironic. Could you be any more crybaby just than wait, that? Just wait, bro. So he had, like a whole, he had like a whole thing where he was melting down over Sam Cedar. We just cut it out and when he's specifically talking about me. But, but it's just so funny that they talk about cancel culture and Rees and snowflakes. This motherfucker is the most sensitive man I have ever met. <laughs> this the rees coming off him are radiating listen to research this. behind the things that i say the things stephen crowder says and even the things sam cedar says i think it's very obvious that if we're trying to have really serious discussions about the cdc and you want to exploit that for personal gain i'm going to call you a bad person okay oh, no. Tim, i wanted the debate <laughs> i wanted the debate I said, I don't have, I'm not equipped for this debate. Let's get two guys together that are. And he bitched out. So how am I a bad person, Tim? Well, you, and what he seems to be implying, <laughs> and, and all of these, all the commentary that I've seen on it, they all seem, uh, they're either lying or they're under the false impression that you set this up, that you challenged him to a debate. Steven Crowder asked for the debate. Like, yeah, he's the one who just, invited you to come debate. He's the one that wanted to debate. They just find it comfortable. They like, it. they like that idea better, so they're just going to stick with that. Right. <laughs> this they, happened because of Crowder. He made it happen. He's they're, they're, the one that wanted... Like, he yeah. wanted to debate the pop culture drama channel, right. that's me, <laughs> and I said, let's fucking do it. <laughs> and the result is, you know, and the, res the rest is history. But how the fuck is this my fault? You don't even have to think about it, dude. <laughs> exactly. He's like, we're having serious debates. Like, for example, that, that taking the COVID shot makes you turn into Magneto. These are well-researched, high-level ideas. These are high-level ideas. <laughs> for example, for example, did you see when Steven Crowder pretended to uh, mock uh, die like George Floyd? These are high-level ideas. <laughs> <laughs> These are well-researched facts, and you are destroying the space. Take your stupid garbage games somewhere else and get out of my face. I'll take them wherever the fuck I want, Tim Pool. And the fact that you're so pissed off made me think that I hit the bullseye. Bitch. Get out of my face. Yeah. I mean, sorry that it blew up on the internet and it went all over your face. I mean. You're putting it in your face. <laughs> you just X the video. I just, don't even know who the fuck you are. Uh, sign off for a few days. Bear, I do know who he is. I'm lying. This is the real baby update. He sounds like he's about to cry. <laughs> oh, he looks like a baby too. Let's see that dome. Dude wears a beanie. Like, you remember that? Uh, There's all these memes of it. You like, wear a beanie. No, I know, but like, he's he never takes it you off. You never ever see it. <laughs> like, he's in like never. dead. Okay. Sun, like, he'll be out in like, you know, 112 degrees Las Vegas and he's got the beanie on. He's to like, be fair, you do that too. Okay, but, Just, I, but have to, I have anything. to point it out it before someone on, else does. It comes on. It comes off. Okay. It's over here. It's over here. 
Okay. Anyway, Tim pulls. I appreciate that. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Somebody uh, donated a hundred dollars. Said, "With peace and love, Tim Pool is the only person I wouldn't want to see wearing a Teddy Fresh beanie." Uh, thank you. Thank you for the. <laughs> thank you for that. And uh, I'll use your one hundred dollars to uh, not send him a beanie. Yeah, pocket that shit. It's for you. I'll just pocket it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> we'll get some food. I'm hungry, bro. <laughs> Mexican. <laughs> Mmm, Dan's got ideas. <laughs> so, um, Tim, you guys remember that uh, there's like that fable or fairy tale about the woman with the red ribbon, and if she took it off, her head fell off? Oh, yeah, I don't, which one that's is that? That's Tim Poole. His head is open. His brain is It's just is exposed, exposed brain matter, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, why he wears so. the beanie. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. <laughs> Jesus. That's Tim right now. Oh my Get the God. fuck out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, you want to come into the political space and burn it all down around you. Shut up! You're such a drama queen! Wait, Who you're saying that we have the power to burn it all down? I, I mean, that kind of sounds I like... I even literally set up a debate for them to discuss it, so, because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> How am I, if anyone's burning it, it's Steven Crowder who's turning it into a circus, inviting me to debate it. <laughs> he, so, should, he should have been happy that somebody showed up with the, those, the topics. Yeah, I mean, it, in, the, in the full clip, because again, it was like 30 minutes long, and the vast majority of it is him getting even more mad than this about Sam. Because mm -hmm. he really fucking hates Sam. And <laughs> the, I, I suspect the reason is he actually did a debate with Sam at one point, and... He destroyed him. It did not... Pull that up. I want to show the Thanos. You want to see the yeah. Thanos clip? Yeah. Okay. Because, so, there's a real... I know some of you guys don't care about politics, but I promise this is all funny. Mm. Um, they had a debate, and they were just talking about some, like, I'm you, I'm you, uh, utilitarian, and I'm... Ut but, utilitarian. And then Tim was like, <laughs> no, I'm this other thing. And he's like, I hate to say this to you, Sam, but you're just like Thanos. Your, th your philosophy is just like Thanos. And Tim's and Sam was like, I don't care. And he well, he didn't know who that was because <laughs> he doesn't watch. He's a fifty-year-old man who doesn't watch Marvel movies. He just, just... look. Tim just looks so dumb. <laughs> and uh, I think he's just mad because it went viral. And that's why you may have seen Sam with like Thanos memes and stuff. Uh... Yeah, someone sent me that clip. I gotta watch that before we Trying continue. To find it. I promise. I know this is politics, but I promise it's fun. I'm here just to burn it all down. I'm not. I'm not here to just talk about. Uh, not talk about the issues. Never about the issues. <laughs> Only about the burning down. How is he going to even make this argument? If Crowder really wanted to debate, he could have just debated. That's well, it. Tim obviously thinks End Sam is a, is, a, is a worthy person to talk to. He did himself. <laughs> he did talk to him himself. So All down around you. Okay, fine. I can commend you for your talent and ability in doing so. And Thank then I you. will say Thank you're you. a bad person. And that's... <laughs> <laughs> okay, is your dad gonna call our dad too to tell yeah, us that yeah, we're not invited to, to dad, play? Tim. It's just a All fact. Right. I, think Sam it's I think it's nap time for baby You're a Tim Pool. Tim needs some milkies. Tim, come here, little baby. I got your milkies. <laughs> mommy, mommy, <laughs> mommy, <laughs> mommy. Tim Pool right now. Milky's mommy. Peter is a lot. You guys got that Thanos clip? We're we're looking for it. I found, I found the debate. We're looking for the timestamp right now. All right, let's keep it moving. Oh, Shredder. Hey, Shred. I thought you were kicking me, Elo. Like, move on or something. No. coward. And that's why. Oh wow, he really turned up. Wait, I want to miss this. Eli, listen how he turns up. Listen how he turns up on me. Think so, and then I will say you're a bad person. Okay. And that's just a fact. That's Sam Cedar is a lying <laughs> oh, coward, Sam, Sam. and that's why people like Steven Crowder should not debate him, and that's why Steven was right for, <laughs> cu for cutting him off and saying no. And Ethan Klein is, is damaging everything, <laughs> making it all worse, because his interest Mommy. is personal gain for his pop culture crap. He doesn't know what he's talking about, so he would Admit rather that. watch people suffer if it gives him suffer. a few extra bucks. That's Ethan Klein. <laughs> What did I do? Oh Suffer. my God! Who's suffering? Mommy, wow. mommy, the little Tim needs his juice box, mommy. Yeah. He's getting cranky. He doesn't need his nap. Timmy needs a nap. He's very mad. Ethan's ruining everything. 
Mommy. Ethan Klein is is damaging everything, <laughs> making Mommy. it all worse. <laughs> Mommy, Free. cancel Ethan. He's a bad person. That's a fact. Okay, we got the Thanos clip. All right, here it is. This is why Tim hates Sam, by the way. Here. Would you vote in favor of someone that you could be sure was going to uh, create 10 concentration camps? This is the high-level debate, by the way. <laughs> I would vote for someone who created t three concentration camps over 10 concentration camps. Really pushing the needle with these fucking high-level debates, Tim. Uh, or would you vote? Or would you or would you vote for someone who would create five concentration camps? Or would, you not, or would you not vote? And not vote. Uh, I would vote for someone who is going to create less concentration camps. So you're you're willing to put your weight behind somebody who's going to make concentration camps? No, I'm not willing to put. I'm, I'm it, willing to put my Twitter weight thread. behind. I'm sorry, it's the next one under it. Oh. Oh, it's not this one? Yes. One I mean, on there? In, this one? Like that, it's the yeah, first. so so for instance, like Thanos yeah. was the was utilitarian and Captain America was deontological. I didn't. So see Thanos it. willing to reduce the suffering by killing, you know, hundreds of trillions versus the you know, thousands of trillions which would be living better off. So uh or or uh, uh, uh Yeah, so, <laughs> Wait, so for instance the best like moment. Thanos. Was the was you telling diminishing the number of concentration camps? <laughs> I think, I think that it's before in this you clip. go, that's a really great point that I think may separate. It's utilitarianism versus deontologism. That you, you you're quantifying versus I'm not. You see, what I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying your philosophical standard is the minimization of harm, and mine is more about the individual is the small. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm curious about the second part of that. You said you know what I mean because I really don't. Oh, so <laughs> so minimizing two, harm. The, the, the two philosophies about. Feeling the in, uh, violating the ethics of an individual is violating ethics regardless. And yours is <laughs> minimization of harm is better. So utilitarian versus deontological. From my standpoint, committing yeah, one unethical I, act is a violation of principle and ethics that can't be crossed. But I will admit there's not like a hard line. It's, 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 you know. is, um, I think that is silly, <laughs> to be honest with there, you. I mean, I, I respect you, you know, but they're very <laughs> strong philosophical uh, positions held by most people. I, that I, kind of, I believe that less suffering is better and that i am willing to i'll, I'll i will myself. tell you something you Here won't like to hear though i'm willing to the, sell the, you, myself if that uh, that's the outcome but but I'll, I'll tell you something you're not going to want to hear and and i admit it's it's uh I'll, I'll call it dickish uh utilitarianism is typically the villain in yeah you guys movies. gotta find the whole thing you gotta watch it before you start. <laughs> oh it was there he said Would i don't care wait listen oh this is a mess but it's right here can you guys just, are you still looking? And, oh, yeah, and still I admit, it's, it's uh, I'll, I'll call it dickish. Uh, utilitarianism is typically the villain in most movies. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, was, I don't care. <laughs> and so this clip went really viral of Tim Poole trying to talk about Thanos, and I think that's why he's so mad. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, which is the exact, it's like, why are you using that as an actual argument in a debate that Thanos... Thanos apparently is that uh, was great by the way just this little snippet yeah because he's he like he's a dipshit these people fall apart when they actually are met with someone who really knows he's a dipshit. what they're talking about yeah so, here he is so he would rather high level Tim Pool watch people suffer if it gives him a few extra bucks. That's <laughs> Ethan Klein. Okay. You know what? It's fine, Ethan. Do your pop culture comedy stuff. It's funny stuff. I got no issue with that. But don't come into this space where people are trying to have very serious conversations about how people live and how people might die if we don't solve certain problems and then no, set it on really? fire and kick the can down the road. Are you? It sounds like the perfect Tim place Paul to is satirize. Lives? Yeah, it sounds like yeah, the perfect that. place to come kick the shit around a little bit. Man, you are. So, this guy has grand, visions of grandeur. Yeah. He thinks so highly of himself. He's like, we got to save people's lives by trying to get them not to take a vaccine. <laughs> That's how I save lives. Or just make everything worse. You bring in a con, a con man like Sam Cedar, whose whole business is just burning things down for personal gain, and I'm going to get pissed off Same about it. Same thing he said about me. This that's guy is wrong. a manipulative, lying con man. So, uh, that, that's why Crowder doesn't want to do anything, have anything to do with him. That's why all the people Crowder mentioned 
don't want to have anything to do with him. And that's why... And then no Crowder speaks for Joe Rogan and uh, all yeah. the people that he mentioned. Oh, yeah, he speaks for Joe Rogan mm. and, yeah. and uh, oh, my favorite was Noam Chomsky. <laughs> <laughs> he speaks for Noam Chomsky, what, too. What a fucking Sam Cedar makes all these videos, and he focuses on drama. I mean, the man's obsession with lie. Dave Rubin is laughable. It's absolutely laughable. I hate saying his name because it gives him attention. The dude's gained oh around 30,000 or so subscribers after Ethan propped him up. So congratulations, Oh, that's Ethan. why he's mad. <laughs> it's because his channel's growing. Y'all gotta better go subscribe to Sam Cedar right now. I tell him Thanos sent him. Thanos sent him. Tell Tim Pool Thanos is... Um, de <laughs> tell Tim Pool, guys, that uh, Sam Cedar has just collected another Infinity Stone. <laughs> Than on just not caring about the world and being a self-interested, you know, whatever. When Ethan steps in and just throws a, a flaming tur a bag of turd, you know, a flaming turd bag that in the middle of the room, I'm sorry, I'm going to be funny about that. <laughs> Sam does not deserve anybody's attention. Oh, hold on. Can we just take a moment to reflect on the smash the like button uh, graphic that he's got there? About that. Sam does not deserve Smash anybody's that like attention. Smash that like and it's a shame button. that I have, to, I have to say his name and give him attention. So what? So you, so you know what? If you like the guy, go ahead and follow him. Whatever. If you want to follow him, then there you go. He deserves it. But I think anybody... Wait, you're not making any sense. He does, uh, Tim, you're such a dipshit, bro. He was engaged in rational political conversation. Should ignore this. Well, anyway. Oh, what is this? There's another Tim Pool gets owned on Joe Rogan? No, it's just that he said that he's single because of feminism. Oh, that was a fucking great oh, tempo. God, By the way, so he went on Joe Rogan and he said, MAGA star who predicted 50 state Trump victory. He went out and he said, I'm predicting a landslide, all 50 states, including California for Trump. The second time? Yeah. Bag of turd, and New York. a flaming turd bag. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think his, that, that quote about him being single because of feminism was on Joe Rogan, though. I think that screenshot is from Joe Rogan. Okay. Yeah. Wait, can we find that since we're talking about him? He's single because of feminism. He says, uh, I, I remember this. I'm glad we have opportunity to talk about it because it's, it's so fucking, bro, it's like really bad. <laughs> I can't possibly have babies because of climate change. You know? Say what? <laughs> I can't possibly. It's got to be here somewhere, right? All right, one of you guys find it, damn it. <laughs> and, and, and the meanwhile, you know, back. <laughs> in the meanwhile, <laughs> Tim Pool says I'm ruining everything, right? So we prepared a little sketch of, of, yes. what? It's not a sketch. It really happened. What are you talking right. about? <laughs> so this is me. Tim Pool said I ruined everything. Well, I give, we wanted to give you a little behind the scenes video to prove that he's wrong that I don't ruin everything, and that I help everybody. So let's prove Tim wrong right now. Ethan helps. Dan, what's he doing? Let me help you with the lights. Uh, no, oh, I'm just, dude, what the fuck, man? Again? Again? I was just trying to help, bro. Now the set's on fire. Bro, just, I don't, I don't need any help. I don't need any help. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to help. <sighs> Ah, uh, you don't have to watch that. Let me, let me take care of it. No, no, no. I, 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 I really, I really don't. Like sugar, the kid, though. I got Why, you're I, cursing I, at me no, in the no, language? I, I don't even understand. I got it, I got it, I got it. Bro, it's just... Your just, plates, I got it. I, I, don't, don't, don't. I don't want you to cut yourself. We got a show. Tell me what. Fuck, man. Oh, a new chair? Yeah, putting it together. Wait, 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 is there an injury there? No! Walk it off! Oh, something impaled me so bad, dude. Oh, dude why did you stop me? I, I, I said it wasn't done! Ah, ah, ah. Shit! Oh, shit, we need so a fucking bad. medic. God damn it. Medic! Medic! Ah. Guys, I'm running low on battery. Can someone help me to the charging dock? I got you, dude. Here. How's this uh, work? It just goes back here into the on. spot. Wait. Here. No, no, no. I got it. Oh, Wait. damn. Dan, help me. Dan, Ethan, what's up with you? Oh, I got it. Hurt. I got it. I got it. I got it. Dan, help me. Help me, Dan. I got this it. not fun. Help me, Dan. Stop it. it. You're, 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 I got it. What? I can dock you. I know how to dock you. What are you doing? This is not how you do it. Wait, I got it. Dan. I got it. You just, here, just walk right into yeah. that. Yeah, just park me. 
Oh my god, you're just making it worse. Here. You, you need to learn to do this yourself. No, you're, you're making it worse, Ethan. You are Stop. in, you just missed the spot. Dan, Dan, he's doing it again. You need to, you, <laughs> uh, I'm just ruining everything. Ethan, are you serious? Dude, you just... If, oh I got god. it. I got it. Ethan Klein is, is damaging everything, making it all worse. Ethan, get the fuck out of here! Get on yeah. moving! Get out! What the fuck? Get out! Moving! Get the fuck out! It seems you guys don't Can want me here. Fucking get the fuck off! Get I get the picture. Out. I get the picture. Leave! Leave now! Leave. Leave. Fucking out of two, man! Dude, come on! Uh, Zach, uh, Did you Zach, fucking break the Gatsby too? The Gatsby doesn't work. God. Yeah, bye, loser. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye, loser. Yeah, thanks for dropping by and fucking everything up. Get out! He's right. <laughs> See, Tim was right. I ruined everything. <sighs> Love that. He, how did he know? <laughs> Triggered Tim Pool, really. Yeah. Bag of turd, you know, flaming turd bag. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you guys gotta find this clip. I didn't of him. know that Tim Pool is like such good material. Like, oh, actually... bro, there's there's a whole Twitter account <laughs> that's fairly popular that's just dedicated to lampooning Tim Pool. It's pretty amazing. I mean, amazing. if you guys bring back content court. Tim Pool content court? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty. I'm sorry. I'm going to get pissed off about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you would. Yeah. <laughs> and now I just want to promote Sam Cedar as much as possible. <laughs> the majority report. You guys, you come on. You, you got, you, did you find it? I'm the moment, but I had the video. Okay. If you, okay. You'll tell me when you got it. Yeah, he says that he can't find a girlfriend because of, uh, because of, but like the specific reasons he states is just, it's kind of the best thing ever. So. Bag of turd, you know, flaming turd bag. <laughs> this is fantastic. So here's why Tim Spool's single and it has nothing to do with uh, anything we just talked about. That he's an emotion, he's like a, uh, uh, an unhinged little weasel. I can't possibly have babies because it? of climate change. Oh, you this, know. right, which is nonsense. No, of course. but I do think it's crazy that I'm about to be 34 and I have no family because my my dad had two kids by the time he was 27. Yeah, and I'm like, man, you know what? You know what the problem is though. It's definitely not me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's everybody else. Yeah. I can't Imagine possibly. actually saying that. Oh my god. Imagine actually saying that. It's like it's it, it's like a joke that it's like a sketch. It's like Michael Scott. Yeah. It's definitely not me. It's everybody else. Oh my god. It's almost like he wow. he diagnosed the problem <laughs> as he was saying it. That I'm about to be 34 and I have no family. Cause my, my That's kind of sad, but a great soundbite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to be 34 and I have no family. So how do you explain I got a fuck? I have a kid and a wife. How do you explain that one, Tim Pool? Good luck explaining that one. You ruin everything, Ethan. That's why the world's unfair. It's everybody else. <laughs> yes, such incel vibes from Tim Pool. My dad had two kids by the time he was 27. Yeah. And I'm like, man. You know what you your know dad what, you know did? He probably didn't walk around telling the world that the problem is not him, it's the world. Mm -hmm. Your dad probably didn't do that. Yeah, there's like, th there's like probably like close to 4 billion women in the world, Tim. It's all their fault. It's all them. Bag Each one of them. You know, flaming turd bag. <laughs> problem is, though, it's definitely not me. No. Nope. <laughs> I think it's everybody else. How is this guy oh real? I can't possibly. You know who has kids in a family? <laughs> Sam Cedar. I mean, how do you have these words come out of your mouth? And not laugh. N and not laugh, or immediately, as soon as you walk off the set, you walk into a therapist. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I just don't know. You go, like, you know what? You go, oh. I just <laughs> did that. I just say that? Okay, bye. I'm going to end the show now. <laughs> I wonder what her reaction was. My, my she's, dad. Like, she's like, yeah. Everybody else. <laughs> I'd had two kids it's by the time best. I was 27. Yeah. The greatest. And I'm like, man. <laughs> You know what? You know what the problem is, though. It's definitely not me. Mm -hmm. I think it's 
to everybody wow. else. Yeah. I can't possibly have. It's unreal. <laughs> it's the best clip on the internet. That's why he's so angry. Oh. <laughs> oh, Lord. So sad. Virgin yeah, Temple. Virgin Temple is getting angry at the Chad's uh, Sam Cedar. I'm a Chad compared to Tim Pool. <laughs> that's crazy. Eva. I'm your Chad husband. <laughs> anyway, that's it. That's all I've got about that. That was beautiful. Yeah, it's getting out pretty good, eh? You guys did a good job. <laughs> What's that? Like, why are you still here? <laughs> right. How's your leg feeling, though? Oh, my leg. Oh, my God. I <laughs> fell off that chair. So I fell off the chair, <laughs> and the chair has like a... a an L-shaped metal bar, oh. and I fell with all my weight Ooh. on. <laughs> no, yeah, there's a real... I, got, I have actually. I don't not... know if you can see, but from the side, there's like uh, a real Careful bump. with what you're... Uh, you're it's showing a lot of skin here. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get an ass shot. <laughs> Come here, Tim Pool. This is why you're single. You want to yeah. know why you're single? It's because I'm getting all the ass. Mm. <laughs> all four billion of them right here, baby. There's a bump here. Yeah, no, it's, I got, I have, <laughs> that's probably the most pain I've experienced in a long, long time. I thought, I actually thought it impaled me. I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital. <laughs> I was genuinely <laughs> writhing in pain. The face you made, I, I thought you may have got penetrated. I can't think of a better yeah. word. Penetrated? Yeah. I thought I penetrated too. What? I did as because well. Because there's a, there's a point going up. Yeah. I'm glad you didn't. I wasn't sure, like, if we should get rolling with it or what. Like, yeah, I, I, I thought you, I mean, you're a great actor to begin with, so. Like. Well, I didn't want to reshoot it, so I was like, let's just... <laughs>